Let's start over here. So yeah, I stream last time was using Claudio. The shitty ass lost player fucked me up for being shitty at the matchup. So I figure I'm gonna, you know, hit the fast forward button a little. Save the Eddie stuff for later, the Eddie tracking stuff, and just jump right into Lars, because uh, he's a popular character for whatever reason. He's also one that a lot of people requested me to do. So he okay, good. Game's running much better now. So <clears throat> here's what I know about Lars. He has like real straightforward pokes, right? He has uh, one of the better block punishing with punishing launches in the game with that forward back 2 1. 14 frames with a lot of with a lot of space covered. He can punish a lot of stuff with like juggles that a lot of characters cannot because of how much space he covers and how fast that move is, right? Um, and he he has like a bunch of solid poking and stuff like that. But if he has one upfront obvious weakness, it's his uh, his lows. His good lows are like these, like the sweep and that. They're both lost punishable. And outside of that, like regular ass low poke. He's kind of stuck with the generic stuff, which isn't the worst thing in the world, right? Negative two, stuff like that. Negative three, he has this weird shit, which has a built-in follow-up, which I don't even think is a natural combo, right? Yeah, no, it's not. Maybe on counter here. And, you know, he has a lot of high-risk evasive stuff, but that's really the thing that makes him, like, weird. It, like, weird and maybe somewhat weak. His biggest weakness is, like, the lows are a little, like, lacking sometimes, and... He's so fucking high risk, right? More high risk than you think. If you're thinking about just on guard, you think about, oh, this is safe and that's a launcher. You're thinking about it the wrong way because the thing about that is, on whiff, he recovers super slow. You see how slow he is to follow that up? So if you get that shit to whiff, it's an easy launch. Stuff like that. So if you kind of just mindlessly throw this shit out like a lot of Lars players, like, like, like a lot of mediocre Lars players like to do, you get killed. Either way it goes, he's still a solid character. It's just, uh, I guess he's in that, in that position now where a lot of characters do what he can do good, but they could do it better, and they don't have quite the same uh, weaknesses that he does, right? So with that out of the way, now we're going to go in depth, right? Starting with the jab, like always. 10 frame startup, plus 1 on block, plus 8 on hit. Standard, stand, uh, sa standard standing 1 jab, right? So... Uh, jab range. His jab range looks pretty average. By the way, uh, his movement. His movement feels pretty good. I don't know if I would say it's above average, but it's definitely good. Alright. Next, he has a 1 1 string. Not natural combo. Wait, is it? Is it natural combo? Okay, it is. Sorry. That is a natural combo. Even on hit. Zero. Negative 8 on block. Same thing on counter hit. Right. And he has 1-1-1, one, 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 right? None of that is a natural combo. 1-1-1 one, one, one is negative 12. By the way, 1-1 one, one on hit is negative 8. Negative 8. So, what about the second hit? Second hit counter hit makes the third hit guaranteed. But not normal hit. Last hit by itself. Just forces crouch, nothing special, plus four. On counter hit, knocks down. I know that's a get, that doesn't get a juggle, I think, but does get a free hit. Whatever his stomp is. I don't know if that stomp is guaranteed, though. Yeah, stop is guaranteed. He may get some, he may get something better, but 16 damage ain't bad. My only issue with that is a lot of instances when you see something like this, where you're gonna knock down like that, it will get. Oh, great! Thanks for the donation. I appreciate it. Silent donation at that. Thank you very much. Glorious donation. So the thing I know I noticed up front about this already is in a lot of other instances where you see the second hit makes the third hit combo on counter hit it will still give you the knockdown in a lot of other instances when you see something like this in the stream but for Lars it doesn't it just forces crouch at plus three not even plus four. Oh, I thought it was plus four only plus three. One, one, one. Oh well boo fucking who if you get the second hit to if you get the second hit to counter hit 
that's still at uh, 29 damage, so that's not bad. And the thing about string like this is it kind of, it pretty much buffs his jab pressure, right? Jab pressure is something that every character could do. When you get these attachments, it works as an extra deterrent for the opponent. The opponent may not want to swing when you start pressuring them with this, because then you can work in that, right? And uh, as far as it being counter hit confirmable, that I'm not sure. You could delay that, all right. No, nah, the moment I delay it, I lose the, the, the... Yeah, no, you gotta commit. Uh, negative 12 does not force crouch. Okay, so... On block. On block, it does not force crouch. Alright, and that's his 12 frame punisher, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, forward 2-4. Four. So yeah, uh... 13? No, nope. It's hitting him because I didn't block, but it's not a punish. Hold back now. Yeah, I know. So it's negative 12. <clears throat> so the reward is eh, but hey, it's another thing, like I said, to work with your jab pressure. And you can delay the last hit, which makes the stomp follow up good too, you know what I'm saying? Because bam, and then you get the stomp. So that's really kind of how you want to play around with that string. And if you want to commit hard to the 1 1 1, because you, for example, let's say I do this and so this a lot, and I'm noticing that my opponent crouch jabs after the standing, after the standing jab. Oh, sorry. If my opponent crouch jabs after the down forward one, for example, and I go back into a jab. Wait, no. I, I said that wrong. Sorry. If my opponent blocks my stand jab, for example, like this. There are often times where I run to an opponent who will block a stand jab, and then, uh, how do you crouch up with him? Oh, down one with him, not down back one. Okay. What the hell? Sorry. All right, it's a little weird. His cross jab from standing is down one. Usually he's down back one with the characters that I use. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I run to that fairly often with lower level and lower mid level opponents when they defend with cross jab. They'll defend off of the stand jab on block. That's when that one 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 will eat him alive. For example, just a random example, right? Right, because then it'll be like, oh, will it even give me the gap? It doesn't give me the gap. It's not even good for that. Can you delay? Oh, maybe that's not as good as I thought. Okay, rewind. It's not good for that. This is really only good for you committing to the first two hits and then delaying the, the third hit. If someone's already crouching under the first jab, then the second one can clip them. Like that. So for example, right, they duck and then they try to wall standing you. It'll clip them because the gap between the first and the second one one is really, really small. So it'll catch a lot of people who don't make the instant wall standing four. It might be the only thing that could like really consistently uh, beat that out. But for the most part, it'll clip people in that situation. Not an amazing move. It's not like bad. Really, the better way to use it is probably to delay the third hit. Just know that you're a negative eight off of the first two hits. But as long as you're safe, in a situation where you have a delayable move to interrupt them if they press buttons, negative eight kind of doesn't matter because you get that mental frame advantage. That doesn't mean you should do shit like this and then sweet. There's like a giant visual gap there. So I wouldn't recommend that. But definitely something like this. Oh, sorry. So definitely something like this. And then like a back dash. Maybe, you know. Or just pause. Or just uh, pause, jab. And then you're back at plus one. You know, something like that. That's one way to use that move. All right, next we got a uh, good old one-two. Standard ass one-two, negative one on block. Plus five, I'm assuming. No, plus seven. That's actually better than a lot of other one twos. Plus seven on hit, negative one on block. So, good one-two string. Um, and he has a one-four. He's one of those motherfuckers with a jab into a low. But his, unlike, let's say, Katarina's, does not combo on normal hits. Negative 12. Uh, plus one. Yeah, not bad. Plus one. That low does cover a lot of space, too. So if you were like just out of jab range, that low might keep you covered. Nothing special on counter hit. Still plus one. That's one four. Alright. 
And this is one of those where if you get hit by the jab, you cannot low parry. But if you block, you can low parry. So if you get hit by the jab, you gotta crouch block. And hit, hit him with a wall static four or whatever your 12 frame is. No real tracking on that. Wow. What the fuck? Why is his jab tracking? His jab tracks? Why is his jab tracking? What the f Am I crazy? Uh. Stand guard, right? I'm trying to go left. Yo! At plus one, his one jab tracks? That was. That, this must be a large specific thing, because that's weird. That's really weird. Yeah, see, at negative one, not so much. Man, hmm. I wonder if that's a large thing. Weird. At plus one, up close. Not even up close, look at that. At plus one, ah, oh, see? At the tip, maybe not. At the tip. Oh, maybe. Huh. Fucking weird. I definitely want to call his jab tracking, but that's. It's, it might just be like a matchup thing based on the way they're standing with their fucking stupid looking poses, right? Whatever. I was trying to check if that uh that low tracks well. This is this is seen to, but it's kind of hard to test it like this because that jab is clipping me so much. So, yeah, it's one of those where they just sidestep and they don't walk. Yeah, I put a little bit of a delay there, that's why I was able to get around it. Oh, no way, I went the wrong way, actually. Sorry. Thought I put a delay in there. Yeah. Man, this guy's jab is so weird. There it is, okay. Yeah. Well, they'll be able to walk around it, but I'm assuming if they step, they'll have to watch for the low instead of walking. All right. Uh, yeah, one four is all right. This is definitely one of those that, like, you kind of have to have it because, like I said, you don't have just, like, really solid, regular low pokes with ours. You kind of, outside of the uh, shoe shine, however you do it, how you do shoe shine? Well, wherever, whenever I get to a shoe shine, it's only from full crouching. So from standing, he kind of just doesn't have like a, you know, a poke that doesn't get him killed. So that's just one of those. And yet another one of those that buffs his jab pressure. Because in this case, unlike with this, there is a gap between the jab and the low. So it'll stop people from swinging, right? See? There's no gap there that locks me down. So it'll stop people from swinging. But it's not such a huge deterrent because it's only that little 10 to 12 damage if it's a counter hit. All right, so next we got standing two jab. Plus eight on hits. Zero on block, 10 frames. Lars one of those motherfuckers with a... with strings out of his two jab. Two, one. This is a popular one. You've seen this before. Plus four on hit here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oof, gross. Plus four on hit, negative seven on block. And this is high mid, which is good because it'll check people crouching a lot. And then we got two enders here. Two, one, three, which is a uh, high mid mid. Two, one, four. High mid high. Now, how do these strings work? Okay, not on normal hit. Not on normal hit. Counter hit, yes. Counter hit, yes. Ooh, the high is way more damage than the mid. The high is negative seven. The mid is negative 12. Go 
go left. Forward? Oh, it's forward. Alright. So you could go left. What's his armor move? Alright, well, whatever. Unless you're a big character or a bulky character, you could go left against that strength. Of course, the high locks you down. Yeah, you can't move. You can't even start to slice and die. But of course, you could do that. Duck and launch. So the high is negative seven, was it? One more time. And the mid is negative twelve, and could be the mid could be sidestepped left. <clears throat> Both of them combo. The second hit counter makes the third hit combo for both enders. The high is more damage. So we've been through this several times, how you use a string like this. Uh, it's just the, the two one is pretty solid in general. Unfortunately, it's a little heavy negative on the negative frames on block at negative seven. But still, it's a solid, um, it's a solid uh, jab string. And uh, it's good to check people crouching or mashing. You know, crouching into mash, right? If they crouch under the two and then they mash, you can check them with these strings. I don't think there's any special properties on counter hit by themselves. Oh. Thirty-two damage, damn. It's a, lot of damage. it's a lot of damage on that high kick in the end. Jeez. Also, um No, I need a regular launcher. Um does he have a fucking regular launcher? How about you look at it here? Two one. Ah, uh, two one four. See I had a feeling. 214 the high is also a tailspin. Right? I just don't know how to, he's his juggles all do his launchers all do weird shit like this, so I don't know how to Oh yeah, I know how. Right? Uh, 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 right, there you go. So yeah, I had a feeling. So that might catch people like, for example, when I have a character with a hop kick, instead of crouching into while standing under hives, I like to crouch into hop kick. Like that, right? And uh, so if you were fighting someone like me doing shit like that, uh, because it comes out fast, so that's why I like to do it. Because you input it like, you know how jet up or you input forward back two? This you can input the down up forward four, up forward three for a hop kick. So it, it feels natural to me to do that. But if you were to catch someone like me doing shit like that, right? Um... Ah, not as good as I thought for that, cause the mid will check him anyway. But I was gonna, I was gonna say like if you like to, if if you, uh, cause I was thinking like, oh, I would be airborne for the mid, and then the high would kick me, and then you would get a juggle if I were to try to come up with a hop kick. But the gap is too tight, so maybe he's not even that great for that. But it'll still like, it'll still combo, you know, to the mid high for decent damage. So yeah, see, I had a feeling okay. it wouldn't hit me airborne, but whatever. Still, decent string. All right, next, uh, standing three. It's definitely something I've seen before. You could hold down. Thank you for the follow, Street Fighter, the token true. Wait, SV, the token true. I thought it looked like an F to me. SVX, the token true. Thank you for So here you can hold down to go into one of his stupid looking stances, right? Where he touches the floor here. Uh, Press three. Same frame date as if you don't the corner RB Norway. Plus five either way, right? As far as I can tell, this isn't even like a stance. This is just a way to go into full crouch. This is 15, right? Okay. So if this is plus five, this should exchange. This is 16. 15. So this should exchange right now, right? If this is plus five. No. Oh. Hmm. That is fifteen, right? I'm not crazy. So Arby Noe is wrong. You're you're at more than uh, plus five. 
This is 15. Yeah, this is 15. Uh, let's try this. Wow, you had a lot more than plus five. Yeah, plus. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. Sorry, it's been a while. It is correct, it is plus five. <laughs> it's plus five because my crowd jab exchanged with his while standing one. Sorry, I was trying to do 15 frame like it was zero. Bear with me, guys, it's been a while. It's been a while, my brain is not working. All right, it is plus five on hit. All right, so. And that's something also plus five. Yep, exchange with a jab, we're at plus five. <clears throat> oh, he can launch that. Yeah, he can launch that. So plus five, whether you go to crouch or not, you could just opt to stay standing. So that's interesting, a little uh, thing about that. 16 frame startup, good range, but negative 12. Whether you hold down or not. That's interesting, because it's going to make punishing it weird, right? Because when you talk about punishing, negative 12, more often than not, you're talking about punishing with a high. I'm going to take off this wrist thing. My, it's irritating. Hopefully, my wrist doesn't start hurting. So let's see if I'm right here. We're going to record this holding down and then block. And I'm going to stand block. Right? Negative 12, right? Okay. Negative 12. Now, crouch block. Mmm, what do we have here? Look at that, it whiffs. See, it whiffs. And you can still block 13 frame mids. What a piece of shit, Lars. God, fuck you. Crouch that. <laughs> Punish. All right, so it was as I, was, as I thought. Basically, if you're fighting against Lars and you want to punish this, and he goes into the low, you need a 12 frame mid. Or cross jab, I guess. Right? If you're like Geese and you have meter or Akuma or Eliza with meter, they could punish that with cross jab into like super or whatever, right? Consistently. Either way it goes, you're gonna want to punish this with a 12 frame mid to avoid whiff. Because then what ends up happening with shit like this is if you don't know what's going on and you try to do your 12 frame punish. That's what happens. Okay. Nope. No string is quick enough. So you got a nice little gimmick here already. And I'm only a few moves into his move list. <clears throat> That's three down. Three down or three standing. Next, we got his four. This is a, another tail spin move. This looks like the same thing at the end of this turn, right? Yep. It's the same kick that you see here. Uh, 27. 27, right? All right. So no counter hit properties there either. Same thing. 32 damage. Takes off the fucking grip. Damn, he moves forward so much. Alright, 32 damage. So yeah. Uh, and just like at the end of that string, it's negative 6. So it's exactly the same kick. 17 frame startup. Uh, it's a lot of damage in one hit. So what that tells me is, in some instances off of a combo, you might want to go right into that. Like, I don't know Lars combos, but if you're able to go inside off of a launcher, it might be really good damage. See? Shit like that. 18 damage up front on his uh, off of his launcher. So That's good. Alright, next you got forward plus one. Which is a unique move. Interesting. So he can't do lead jabs. This is 13 frames. Forward plus one. Uh, forward plus one is plus six. Negative five. Alright. There is one thing I forgot to test. So now, now, that, now that we're past the jabs... Let me uh, rewind here a little bit. Stand guard. 
step. Alright. Okay. Um. Plus one, he kind of his jabs really clip you well when he's at plus one. You know, I, I always wonder why he always get clipped by Lara stuff after blocking a jab when I try to sidestep. And now it's kind of becoming clear to me. It's just for whatever reason, his jabs just do this. His jab when he block when he's at plus one in your face. There's a lot of this going on. You see, you see this shit. There's a lot of this going on. And it could just be depending on the matchup, depending on what character. I gotta know. I gotta know. Let's try it with Ling. So I definitely felt like it, like it's harder to sidestep Lars pokes than usual. And I kind of just wrote it off as me being bad with my movement. So I feel like I gotta find out. Lars thing. I, I don't know so many other characters that do this kind of shit. That's frustrating. Alright. So that one jab shit is not a coincidence. the hosts you can all come along and learn learn along with me or uh, call me a scrub or whatever the fuck you want I'm going through Lars's move list right now and I just discovered something about his jabs right so it seems like for most of the cast when he's in a plus one situation and you try to go to your left his one jab just clips you and I don't think I've seen this yet in any of my run throughs I've gone through most of the cast at this point. So that's interesting. Alright, so uh, next move I was looking at is this forward one, which also seems to track. So if I go to negative one, the one jab doesn't track. See? This forward one seems to track pretty well, though. Alright. Do I have plus three, uh, minus three anywhere? I don't. Not yet, at least. Forward one. Minus five, right? So I think this is pretty reliable. Seems to track to his right pretty well. Right. That's negative twelve, so it wasn't a good example. Alright, uh so he has a string here attached to this. But first let me test the other way. Four one. Negative thirteen. No, not negative. Thirteen frames. Does not seem to track to that side. Not a plus one, not a negative one. Alright. So, solid tracker to his right side, high. He has a string. One, two, four. Oh, this goes into, what was it? Dynamic entry. Sen, S C N. One of the silent entry. Dynamic entry is D E N. S C N is uh, silent entry. He goes to automatically. Forward, forward, one, two. 
You go into it automatically. Corner RB, no way. This is plus six on hit, negative five on block. It is also plus six if you just do uh, forward one, by the way. And negative five on block. That's weird. Uh, combos. Alright. How's this fucking string work? So he has the low, the mid, and then that mid, that fast mid. I'm assuming that's the, gonna be the actual frame trap, that mid punch. Right? That's probably gonna be the actual frame trap of the three options. Yep. Thanks for the follow, Till LB. Let's try the other options. Oh, train trap. What does it say? That mid is... 14 frames? Damn. Damn. 14 frames, huh? All right. Oh, wrong button. It's a uh, two for the low, right? Mash. All right. That got nerfed. That low used to knock down a normal hit. Thirteen interrupts. Fourteen interrupts. Fifteen. Well, that's not really interrupt because it's a low crush, but I'm assuming it's interrupted. Uh, I have a high. Do I have a slower mid? Not yet. Uh, is that a mid? This is seventeen frames. Yeah, 17 frames, he beats it out. So 16 would exchange, because 15 beat it out. Uh, the 16 that I try is a low crush, so of course it's going to win out. Uh, and at the moment, I don't know of a 16 frame move. Uh, that hits mid. 15. 15. 16, got it. There we go. So if you're gonna swing, you can swing at the low, but that both of his mid options will hit you. So the next step to test is how do they track? Because you are left standing. This one is gonna kill you for sidestepping because it seems to come out really fast. Right, that shit comes out at 12 frames. This comes out slower, so you might be able to sidestep this. Oh my god, never mind that. Never mind that shit. All right. So the only thing that would uh, that I would say if you were against Lars and going against this as a mix-up if he were to hit you with the jabs, uh, the low comes out a lot slower than the mid options, right? You could definitely, man, I'm bad at it right now, but I feel like you could train yourself. If you really wanted to never deal with this as a mix-up, you could train yourself to block that. For sure. See? Ah, oh, I was just a split second too slow. But yeah, if you're sharp, I think you could definitely see. You could even maybe even see the low itself. But it is 22 frames, so maybe not. But you could definitely, I feel like you get used to this for a while, after a while. You could basically feel that gap. There's like, a, what is it? The mid is four, that The slower mid option is 14 frames. The low is 22 frames. That's an eight frame gap. That's a big gap for you to, for you to get a feel for. If you block it, what is it? Negative five, right? So. Yeah. <sighs> 
Yeah, there you go. Exchange for 17 frames. Right. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be any high crush properties, is there? Or maybe if he goes into the low. Yeah, if he goes into the low, you're gonna get crushed. And if that low counter hits you, you he gets a juggle or at least a free follow up. Now I know that that mid kick looks like it's a low crush, and it might be, but if you go as fast as possible with a with a low poke, it seems like you're good. He's not gonna get it out in time. That's just too slow. Alright, so what do they like on block? Uh, negative 14. So if you're a 14 frame launcher like Lars is, you can launch that. Uh, negative 10. Only negative 10 for that? Ooh, how much damage does that do that? 27 damage. And does it, uh. 32 damage on the counter. I can hold back, right? Yeah. What about... Okay. On regular here, on counter hit, you can hold back. If you don't hold back, Lars gets a free hit. It's one of those. If I let go... See? Slide and you fall on your ass. He can run up and get a stomp or his stupid little slide kicks, probably. So you gotta hold back to avoid that shit. So here's uh, another thing that I think I've seen Lars players do, but first I gotta find out the input of the slide kicks. Uh, forward, forward, three plus four, is that what that is? Yeah, forward, forward, three plus four. If you hold back, I wanna see if that reaches you. So the timing I did there still would hit me if I were not to hold back, right? If I were trying to like to tech, let's say. Yeah, so that's that's guaranteed if I don't hold back. Now let's see. Oh sorry. Man. There's a giant gap there anyway. That's definitely a gimmick I feel like I've seen lost players use after that mid hitting. But that's some gimmicky ass shit. And if that shit like stops right in front of you like that, it's a free launch. If you're awake. Uh... Ooh, look at the pushback. Luckily, his 2-1 has a little bit more range. You see? I cannot hold forward one with Lars. He has a 13 frame forward one that would go over his jab, so I can't get more range. So if I were to try to punish this with 1-2, doesn't reach. Luckily, he has a 10 frame 2 1 that will double as another 10 frame Punisher with more range. You gotta keep this in mind if you're a Lost player. You might want to punish more often with 2 1 on block than with 1 2. Same thing with 2 though. If you hold forward 2, you get his 12 frame. So, you gotta just press 2 1 without holding forward. <clears throat> Alright. So, is there any other options off of that stupid stance? Silent entry, right? Oh, his rage drive. All right, I gotta look up his rage drive. Where's silent entry? Uh, oh, this song is sick. I'm gonna pump this up for a second, hold on. Ah! Fucking full screen, minimizing my shit. Come on. They gotta fix this fuck. I can't believe it. It's been almost a year and this PC version still does this kind of bullshit. Come on. Alright. <laughs> We're looking for silent entry stuff.
This is interesting. I don't see anything here labeled as during silent entry. Ah, oh, here it goes. Dynamic silent entry. So there's one more silent entry option here. Down forward one. So we covered the other three. What's down forward one? Ooh. Nothing special on counter. Looks like a forces crouch plus four. And how fast is that? 14 frames, just like the uh, launcher. Oops. Negative four, so he has a safe mid option at a side of entry that's just as fast as uh, this kick. Interesting. So we don't really need to test that. We know it's 14, just like the kick, so the same thing will apply. Just got to know that it's actually safe on block. Not only safe, but negative four. He could pretty much sidestep a lot of things, though. Right? Oh, force cross, too. All right, force cross. That means you got to be knowledgeable of your opponent's uh, while standing options to determine if you actually really want to sidestep after something like that. A lot of uh, while standing stuff tracks more than you would think, but they tend to track more to one side from uh, my knowledge at least. So yeah, I bet you that while standing one will track to my left. So, two options cover my right side. See? Told you. He has a really good wall standing forward. It covers both sides, looks like. And wow, three options. So, you definitely want to go left. If you were fighting another Lars, because then you'll at least avoid the launcher. Of course, you can just go left and then block. And then, uh, if you uh, are able to react to a whiff, do you uh, get your forward one plus two ready, right? <clears throat> All right. So anyway, we uh, we already covered forward one tracking to Lars's right side. Forward one two. So, at negative 13, if you choose, if you don't want to do your negative uh, 12 Punisher here, which is a lot of damage, and you want to go for this into some sort of mix-up instead, as a 12 frame Punisher, 13, sorry, 13 frame Punisher, you have that as an option. I don't I don't think I would recommend doing that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, and also, if you just press 3, forward 1, 2, 3, as one string, You'll do that kick in the end and go right into dynamic entry instead. And apparently this does some sort of knockdown. Woohoo! Is that a juggle starter? Alright. Look at dynamic entry now. See? This is the string I just did. Forward one, two, three. Automatically goes to dynamic entry. The dynamic entry has five options here. Forward one, one, two, two, three, one plus two. Four doesn't do anything, I guess. Nope, nothing for four. Is that one plus two? How about I just look at it here? My dog is barking. So you could switch over to a silent entry with the, what is that, a high? That's a high. And according to my bot, it's 11 frames. Or you could go into a string with one, two, to the high mid, it's high, high.
Oh, this is weird, the timing on this. Like, I'm trying to mash it out, I'm getting... Alright, you gotta delay it. You gotta delay it. You gotta do the forward one, two, three really fast as one quick string. No delaying at all. And then you gotta pause for a second and then one, two. See? Big delay. It's awkward if you're not used to it, which I'm definitely not. No delay on that, though. Okay. So you can't put any delay on this uh, dynamic entry one, two string here. So you can just go into it like that, though. Alright. Forward three plus forward, just go into a raw. So this is definitely a natural combo. Negative six? Wow. That's only negative three on block. And that's only negative six with pushback. One back dash. And you get your basically a free with punish if they swing. Want to see that in action? That might. I don't know if I input it that well. We'll see. Free to try a back dash, at least you can still block. Yeah, it's kind of finicky at, at times. Sometimes I'll get the jabs, other times I won't. It's one of those large things, I guess. His down forward one covers pretty good range, though. But this is definitely one of those things you want to think about, especially with somebody like Lars, who has so much forward movement and, and some really good moves. Anytime you see that sort of spacing off of a block, something on block, I mean, you just look at that shit. I don't even have to hold back right now. Look at what you see on the screen right now. That's like basically one and a half back dashes away, right? Maybe just one full back dash, I don't know. Uh, depending on the matchup, he's fighting somebody with some stubby-ass buttons. You could really fuck their shit up for whiffing in this situation. Also, he has like a backswing blow, right? I know he, I don't know the input, but I know he definitely has a backswing blow, so that's another thing to consider in that situation. Whew, okay, uh, so we got that. Um, got that. Got that. I thought he was able to go into his while running grab. Was it really his only dynamic entry options? Two, three, right? So that knockdown probably gives him. Right? No, it doesn't give him anything for free. What if they don't hold back? Or what if they get counter hit? Okay, nothing for free if they hold back. If they don't. Ah, oh, I was about to say if you could tail spin them, if they don't. <clears throat> How about, um... Oh, wow. You have to get something for free out of that. If they don't hold back. So 
does not he doesn't ever get a juggle off of that at least. He does that backflip. I feel like this used to be a launcher in the older games. Maybe I don't know. So yeah. He has basically the 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 fact that he's able to do this three out of that string, like that, it stops people from mashing after the one the first two. So there's like a high risk, I guess, to turn depending on how they swing for mashing something after blocking the forward one too, right? So you can kind of force those mix up that way, and then if they mash, you get that to forward uh, to, to force the mix ups. Uh, forward one, two, three on block corner. RB Norway is negative nine, but I don't know if he could block in dynamic entry. So let's see what that's really about. <laughs> so it's one of those. Oh yeah. That's the fastest one, right? Okay. Right? Oh, across the high, huh? Oh, across that that standing four is a super high kick. Damn. Just trying to kick down the clouds with that shit. Goes under that. How does jabs though? So basically, this is negative nine, but it's still launch punishable. His fastest move loses out to 16 frames, and he cannot block. So you need to basically treat that shit like it's negative 16. Uh, what's it, 11 frames, negative nine. You could go with 17 frames, 18 frames. You need to treat that shit like it's super launch punishable. But you can't be slow, because if you're slow, that's when you fucking eat the fuck elbow. All right, right. And uh, to go back to uh, silent entry. Can you cancel that? Oh, he's forced to stay in that stupid ass pose. So. Oh, look at that shit. <laughs> God damn. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, man. Jesus Christ. That would piss me the fuck off. Are you kidding me? You see, that that would piss me the fuck off. So what's going on there is his stupid ass pose, right? It's making his like surface area lean backward because his stupid ass right leg is leaning forward, pushing you back. So his actual hurt box is way back there and he's pushing you fucking outward. So you need like something, you need something like that to really be fucking consistent. I hate shit like this so much. You guys have no idea. All right, whatever. Yeah, so the same thing here, but you need something faster. Faster mid with a good hitbox in case he does nothing, so you don't want to whip. I mean, it's not like he can launch you for whiffing, but that's still fucked up, because that ruins your launch punch, right? Got this weird ass shit, all right. He's got that now too. I forgot about that. That's that new shit. All right. So that covers all that shit. So that's the forward one two stuff. Next we got forward two stuff. This is basically going into his 12 frame. Let me remove this. Can I remove this. Nah. Forward two. So forward two four. That would be his 12 frame Punisher. High high. Does not jail, I'm sure. Crouch, right? Nope, don't jail. And it's negative 12, so even if it doesn't jail, you can still punish it. Uh, he has forward 2 1, which also goes into silent entry. So you have a 12 frame way to go to silent entry for 22 damage, according to this. Right? And does that jail? It jails. Forward two on jails. Okay, good. Alright, so according to uh, RB Norway, because Tekken Bot doesn't know how to handle this kind of stuff. 
Army Nora says forward two one is a negative five on block. Negative, uh, sorry, plus six on hit. Same thing with counter hit. Uh, let's see here. That's the same situation as before, isn't it? Yeah, so it's the exact same situation as forward one two. Forward two one. Same situation except you're going with a 12 frame option to go into it for one more damage instead of a 13 frame option. And a forward two, four for his 12 frame Punisher. High, high, negative 12 on block. Does that have any tracking? <laughs> we got some tracking here. Alright, so just like, just like this situation. Forward two got you covered. Alright, right side. No real tracking outside of that one weird instance with the plus one. Uh, next we got forward four. Ah yes, this is the this is the counter hit me. The counter hit me is back four is the counter hit me. Okay. Uh, forward four is the start of a string. Forward four one. Secondary combo. No delay. No delay. Okay. Wow, 30 damage for. I mean, it's a little slow though. 17 frames. But still, that all combos for 30 damage. It is negative 10, but he has that last hit. Out. I hit a 14 on that last hit. I can counter hit on it by itself. Right, same knockback. Uh, yeah, this thing is kind of whatever. It says ED on hit, which I'm not sure what that. I mean, it does do that little pause zoom in effect. But it doesn't seem like it's anything special. He just gets knocked back, and that's it. Uh. Negative 9. Negative 9. Negative 10. Negative 14. Tracking on that knee. There's definitely a little bit of a gap before that last hit, but you cannot sidestep it. But that tells me that if you're like geese, for example, I can't tell that's an elbow or a back fist. Assuming it's not an elbow, or even if it is an elbow, in this case of geese, you could counter it, I'm assuming. Uh, but it's negative 14, so we can launch it with one bar anyway, right? Alright, negative 14, there you go. Uh, 15. Yeah, so it's definitely negative 14. Uh, yeah, this, this thing seems kind of whatever. I don't know when you would use this. This might be like a like a combo filler in certain situations, like a wall filler maybe. Because it seems too high risk to just kind of fish for it, like you know. I would, I would do that with like negative 10, negative 11, negative 12 enders. Anything above that, maybe even negative 13, but really I would start to feel uncomfortable at negative 13. At negative 14, if this shit, you know, is like this, where it doesn't give me anything special on counter hit, I wouldn't fish for this. This is, this is pretty bad. It's not worth fishing for, for like, what is it, 20 damage? If I, if I get counter hit, it does 24. That shit ain't worth fishing for. At the wall, maybe. So at, at the very least, at the wall, you'll get a wall combo, right? That's about all I can think of. 
I would have used this, like, outside of that. This is definitely a string I've seen before. Either way, if you really did want to fish for it, you could totally do that shit. You could totally do the, you could totally do ba 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 jab ba 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 and then do the last hit like the fifth time and to see if it kind of like, just to fuck with your opponent. But it's way too much. Uh, I guess somebody that knows the matchup and punishes it properly, it's too risky. So I would not recommend it, but know that it is an option. <laughs> All right, next on the list here, and the forward four doesn't really track. Uh, I made it through the whole screen before, right? Okay. He definitely doesn't realign. If you step, he does. But if you walk, he doesn't. Alright. You definitely get that rear. And the whole thing will connect on the back. He moves in such a weird way. Oh, the second hit whiff. <laughs> Alright. Dad, the whole thing doesn't even connect on the back. Shitty move. Alright, so next we got all oh, the classic. Forward 1 plus 2 Arc Blast. This will be your 15 frame Punisher. Well, maybe that now. I don't know what does more damage. This new ship actually might be your 15 frame Punisher now. Because this is... Oh, sorry. No, that's 16 frames. This is your 15 free Punisher, then. This is also your up-close ideal with Punisher. So the thing about it is this got nerfed. I think this used to be only, like, negative 12 on block. Now it's negative 14. Right? Negative 14? Yes, negative 14. Out of the way goes. You, uh... Well, you're going to want to learn to juggle off of this, whatever the fuck it is. Look up some random-ass juggle guide. Uh, but that's gonna be your go-to up close Next we got I mean doesn't even track I don't think it tracks I mean there's not much else to say about it unsafe up close with Punisher up close block Punisher Thanks for the follow El Creo I don't think it tracks Wow, Is that weird as Lars plus one tracking? Oh <laughs> Wow, I take that back. Let's see. What else do I have? Do I have a negative three Yeah, it does track to his right. What about the other way? So it actually tracks to his right. Go figure. Oops. What about uh, sidewalk? Huh. Yeah. All right, so it tracks step pretty well to his right. Walk, not so much. Unless you have plus one, because Lars, I guess. I don't know. That plus one thing that I keep talking about, that that might be like a matchup specific thing. But I did test the jab thing on Ling Zhao Yu before, and it was still jabbing her when she tried to sidestep. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. Don't don't call it, oh, it tracks in plus one because it's Lars. Don't think about it that way. Think about it might track, but don't use it as a right side tracker. Use your actual trackers. It just like, it's like a little cherry on top kind of thing, a little bonus. It might track, you know, but I wouldn't use it with the intent of tracking. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm starting to learn why it's so awkward to try to step Lars during his jab pressure. That, that's gotta be the reason. I get a clip all fucking day trying to sidestep this asshole. Alright. And it definitely, uh, full run pursuit definitely tracks step at least. Not walk. To his right. So if you're against Lars, you could walk it uh, left or step it right. Lars is, uh, historically, Lars's weak side has been his right in general. And I will go over that later. <clears throat> Alright. So next we got the shoulder, yes. Uh, 13 frame startup. Negative 18, like a proper ass shoulder. A lot of uh, pushback, obviously. What's 13? Thir this will be your, your ideal 13 frame punisher because, oh sorry, forward two four still does more damage, but if you need a mid, you got this. 
so here's what I'm wondering. If you could uh, step that, or if you're forced to block that in that situation. The recovery's a little slow, so it's awkward to get this right now. Because the shoulders, so. Shoulders always have slow recovery. I'm trying to get a wild running free right after I recover. That might be too much running. We'll see. Yeah, that was too much. I'm trying to see if you can get it in a situation where if they were to tech, they would have to block. They would be unable to sidestep. That's what I'm trying to see. This is awkward recovery. That looks better. Let's see. Eh, maybe not. Only if they tech uh, right, looks like. They definitely cannot swing at it, though. But they could go left. As long as you're, sh you're not fucking up, you can go left. Alright. Interesting. Uh, and if you hold back... Huh, just short. Just shorts. Try to see if you put a little more run into it, maybe it would realign. But not. Still, it's a pretty solid option as long as you mix it up with something that will cover them going in that direction or holding back. Alright. Uh, so, shoulder is negative 18. Surprise, surprise. Right? It's lost punishable. Um, trying to test uh, movements. Once again, plus one, I'm catching him. But anything a negative one, not so much. Zero. Nope, not even at zero. Uh -huh. So the shoulder only loses to a full on sidewalk to your right. The opponent, basically, if you're against Lars, you're, if you saw what's to your left, you'll avoid the shoulder. Uh, but the shoulder, since it's so bad on block, that's the kind of thing I would sidestep cancel. If, I, if the opponent was using it in that way, it's not, something, it's not something, you know. If I were thinking tracking move right now, the last thing I would be thinking about is shoulder, I'll tell you that much. But in a situation where people do use shoulders, it's like a quick option. Like, don't press anything right now, bam, kind of thing going on. Uh, it's this little cherry on top, once again, the fact that it catches sidestep so well. So, you know, definitely not an uh, optional go to for the tracking, but the tracking is there and it's pretty decent. Uh, next, we got down forward one. Oh, yeah, also, shoulder has decent range. Right. Oh, one back dash worth of range. All right, so next, we got down forward one. I've talked about down forward one pokes many times. Lars has a good one. Because he has a little more range than a lot of other ones. Not quite Kazumi range. Or maybe about as much. He definitely has that stupid ass ducking animation that indicates that in certain instances he will go under highs. Not all highs, but like jabs and shit like that. He'll definitely duck under them at, uh, at certain angles and shit. Um, is he one of those that can do two of them back to back?
so it'll be hard to recreate here but it's definitely it's not like a crush it's just one of those where that ducking animation has this little tiny window somewhere in it where it will duck jabs and that also is a matchup thing like Marduk is not around Gigas's jabs a little bit better than Marduk as far as hitboxes go but like I bet you if Marduk go around down 4 one to down 4 one he'd probably duck the jab I bet you that was like a classic Lee thing and it was a pain that he has to deal with so this is one of those things where you know a little bonus with his freaking poke pressure right as far as the tracking goes Oh, what was that? Oh, okay. Oh, but not at zero. At plus one, at negative one, yes. Zero, no. <laughs> but not at zero, huh? Wow. Go figure. Weird, right? At plus one, no. At negative one, at zero, no. At negative one, yes. At negative five, yes. At negative seven, probably yes, too. What can I say? Weird, right? Uh, his poking is really good, and this probably has something to do with why it's so fucking difficult to sidestep around his poking. Like I keep saying, uh, his poking is really good. Of course, you can always just sidestep with them. You could just hold forward for a little bit. It will realign. You don't have to rely on it, attract it, but if you wanted to just keep the frames tight, so only 11 and 10 frame will interrupt you, then we'll be able to step it, at least, in that direction. You also backdash the real line, oddly enough, right? Alright. So his down forward one is really good. Uh, 13 frames plus 5. I feel like that's worse than a lot of other ones. I feel like it's usually plus 7. But whatever. Plus 5 on hit. Negative 1 on block, so you can still move around after it's blocked, of course. So you can do a lot of, ho you, you can do a whole lot of, you know, this and stuff. So that. Uh, you know. he, has he does have the 12 frame generic load from standing. Down 4. So that goes good with poking like this. Chipping away at their health, basically, all day long. Uh, next, we have down forward two. This is one of the big moves that was changed. Is anybody trying to chat? Usually I get a lot of questions. Everybody just watching along and shit? That's cool too, but if you guys got any questions, whether it's Lars related or not, it could be Tekken related. I'll try to answer them if I know. Is the chat even fucking working right now? I see like this giant weird ass icon at the top of my chat that I never saw before. Whatever. So anyway. Down forward 2 is one of those moves that was changed. This used to be a, I believe, 15 frame counter hit tool for Lars. That would start juggles. Now it's a normal hit mid-high juggle starter. At first, I feel like a lot of people complained about this. But I'm like, man, this move is really fucking good. <laughs> this move. It's not hit confirmable, but you could like... Because of the animation... It looks like it is, right? It looks like it's like something you could delay. You cannot delay it. It is something you could duck and launch, but it's also one of those moves that ducks under a lot of mids in certain situations, like off axis and shit like that. It happens more often than uh, than I like when I'm fighting against this asshole. And it is a natural combo, instant corkscrew, juggle starter for decent damage. That's decent damage right there. Uh, also, second hit. Ooh, what the hell? Okay. So yeah, and that doubles as a corkscrew for mid juggles too, like I did it before, I think. Right? See, look at that. Decent damage too. Um, as far as the tracking goes. Negative seven, huh? <laughs> negative five. Okay. Oh, Aris is live. At negative one, I'm clipping him. At plus one, I'm not. 
At zero, I'm not. At negative five, I am. <sighs> of course, you can walk around and go for it, I'm sure. That's negative seven, so of course it's going to happen. So not no real tracking. Uh, oh, a little more raise on the shoulder. A little bit more than one back dash. A little bit more. See. I have a feeling about this move right now. Hold on a second. I feel like there's a range or an angle where the first hit will connect with the second hit will whiff. It looks like that. Uh, maybe not. Whatever. Seems good. Seems consistent. This is a really good move. Safe on block. Negative seven. Like I said, it's just, it could be duck. Um, plus three on the first hit by itself. Negative eight on the first hit by itself, right? Good, good, good move. Very good. Alright. Down forward three. Kick. It looks like this kick. Because it is that kick. See? Oh, it goes into dynamic entry if you hold down. Wow, that's weird because three down goes into silent entry. Oh, no, that's just three dives is going into duck. It's not silent entry. Sorry. Three down just goes to duck. That's not silent entry. Down forward three down goes into dynamic entry. So once again, well, dynamic entry one is the fastest option. Coin is down forward three uh, without holding down for dynamic entry, plus three on a hit, plus three on counter hit, negative seven on block, right? 16 frame start up. Is that mid? That is a mid. It looks like a mid with a really high hitbox. Um, they stand guard it. It's negative seven. If you hold down to go into dynamic entry, it is a negative four. It says parentheses negative eight. I don't know what that means. Uh, plus six on hit. Forward three does it also. Huh? Oh, that's just forward three? I thought it was forward three plus four. Yeah, I don't know. I think I know what that means. I'm not sure how to test it, though. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know what that parentheses means. Weird. That's 12 frames. Right, okay. I have forgotten to check in the four. So that's 12 frames. Well, so you get the same thing as his regular mid. As far as the speed of the move goes and what it beats out, same as his, uh, same as his solid entry one. Alright. I figured I would check that now because I've forgotten to do that before. Got a Twitch achievement? Who watches the watchers? Um, all right, back to what I was uh, just talking about. So, down forward three, 
plus six. Plus six then. So the other dynamic entry option was uh, was two one, right? Or four, one, two, three. Gives you a knockdown. Oh, this is the first one that keeps him standing. The other one was silent entry. Okay, so this is the silent entry option that keeps him standing. Down forward three. For dynamic entry, right? So we know that this is gonna be out everything. This is 17 frames, so it'll beat out everything except ja except it might crush jabs. Let's see on hit. No, it doesn't. Okay. But anything slower than the jab. See, counter hit. And then on block goes it. Block it's negative four. So negative four. It should exchange with that. This might be wrong. Um, maybe I'll see slow. Let's try it again. Oh, it seems like it's actually negative eight. I don't know what this negative four business is about. I'm Harvey Norway. Weird. I'm gonna go with negative eight. I don't have a 19 frame move success. And I know of this. Yeah, but on hits, you gotta have to respect it. That's a slow move. Lowest option first. I'm assuming no tracking on this. Seems a little more strict if you go right, but if you go left. Of course, it's so slow you could sidestep block anyway. is too fast. It keeps you in check if you try to sidestep. Like you can't even really do any sidestep canceling tricks. So if that kick hits you, you're forced to basically just guess. But the thing is, guessing here is kind of whatever because there's no low. There is no low. So this kind of reminds you of uh, Leo, right? Leo, one of the stances 
uh, was it K and K has the low, and the other stance, whatever the fuck it's called, has the uh, doesn't have the low, but has a lot of plus frames and shit, a lot of evasiveness too. That seems to be what's going on here. This dynamic entry, he doesn't have the low, but he has the way to go into the one that has the low, right? Awkward inputs here. Very awkward inputs. Oh my god. This is so weird. <laughs> you really gotta mash this shit out. There it is, see? So you get a sequence like this. Right? So it's like, oh, it hit me. Oh, oh wow, I got around it. Maybe because I was too slow. Yeah, I was definitely too slow. I wasn't able to get around that shit at all before. There it is. Okay. Yeah. See a clip of that. Wait, what? Why am I able to sidestep this one but not this one? Wait, okay, I am. But. But if I commit. Wait, what the fuck? Oh man, this timing is so weird. It's fucking with my head. This is really fucking with my head. can get around it, but it's really weird. Yeah, like if I do it instantly, I get clipped. But if I'm like a tiny bit slow, I get around it. All right. Okay, so go right. Definitely the weak part of this stance. Go right and then block. Oh, no, wait. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I was blocking, right? All right. <laughs> That's why, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm not going crazy here. Sorry, guys. But they just hit me there, and I got around it. What the fuck? Oh, my God. It, 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 okay, I'm not going crazy. I'm... Maybe I still am. So when you do the one two, it gets better tracking. What is with this move? But if you do the one by itself, it doesn't get the tracking. Something about inputting it as a string gives it better tracking, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm mashing it out. The, this one, I, I, I recorded this shit like five times now. And I was, I'm still able to get around it. That's weird. So I guess you could just sidestep right and cancel it. And then by the time, you know, by the time you cancel, you'll be able to tell a few whiffs. And then if he tries to go for that low, you'll launch his ass, right? Easily. See? Interesting. That is really weird. <laughs> that is very fucking weird. That's kind of like Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter, all strings realign. Well, no, Virtua Fighter has a weird rule. It's not like that. Virtua Fighter has, if you size up the beginning of a string, if you input anything, including the guard button, it, the opponent's string realigns. So you have to deliberately not press anything while the rest of the string whiffs and then take your turn and whiff punish. Weird, right? I don't know what I don't know what the fuck's going on here. For whatever reason, if you input dynamic entry one two, which you have to input really fast without delay, it has better tracking. 
That's I I I'll, rec I'll record this again and I'll mash it even harder just to make sure. But right. I mashed the shit out of that. I don't get it. But that's what's going on. It's the exact same move. Then I back entry one. Fucking weird, man. Alright. Damn it, Tekken. Why you do this kind of shit to me? <sighs> so whatever. This, this down four three, that it's a down. Like I said, dynamic entry doesn't have any built-in low. It might have the what is it? The uh, shining wizard grab out of it. I think it does. I just don't know how to do it. Rejection. I thought that Anna Gentry had the Shining Wizard headbutt. <laughs> Maybe not. But even even if it did, it's like you just break the throw, you know? So there's no reason to duck. Like my Leo example from before, there is a plus on block option. Plus six. With a lot of pushback. So be careful of what you, even though you're plus six, be careful of what you swing with in this situation. See? He's out of jab range. Not out of dot four one range, but any sort of back dash will probably fuck that up, right? Dot four two maybe. Dot four two seems like a solid option. Anyway, then he has down forward 3-3 three, three to catch people mashing after the down forward 3 on block, which is negative 8. But this shit is negative 20. A lot of a lot of space created, though, but uh, you can punish this if you're ready for it. This is the uh, large scrub special right here. They don't know any better, right? Mm, check that out. Lord. Am I holding back? I'm not. He creates a ton of space. See that? Yeah, there we go. That'll work. Oh, that's 21. That's 21. It won't work. Um. Oh, boy. Never mind. Lars is not able to punish his own bullshit. Trying to dash into it a little bit, but that's eight. There it is. Well, he has something. Not great, but he does have that. Is that a natural combo? Counter hit combo, so you can't even use it as a uh, long range punisher. Weird. All right, well, this is negative twenty, so be careful if you're going to use this as a deterrent to force your uh, dynamic entry stuff. But eh, it's gimmicky shit. Uh, it's a lot like Leo stuff, except he's in, he's in an even worse position on block than Leo is generally. Uh, Down four threes tracking again. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Oh. It's got that bootleg track. Negative one, huh? Negative five. I get a one again. 
Not negative five, though. Oh, yes, negative five. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. All right, next we got... Uh, now for four. 15 frame, long range, mid poke. Plus two. Negative eight. Some, some good pushback on this one. Up close, at least. Far away, not too much. Okay, what's going on here is Lars kind of moves himself back and pushes outward if you're close. Or maybe he's just pushing out if you're close, but... The space is really only created up close. Far away, there's not really any pushback. There's one of those if they swing with something that's a little bit slow. They could get fucked up real bad. But jabs will probably catch you. Oh, but I know what you can do here. You do the Claudio, right? Second six, this would work. <laughs> Maybe not anymore. Because Claudio has like a similar mid poke that's faster, but it's negative eight with pushback. And if you go right into his hop kick, he goes under jabs. It's pretty fucked up. I think it's back four for Claudio or down four for him. Here, if you just space it out, you can clearly see how good it is if you space it out. Okay. But if you're up close, not so much, right? Okay, see? If you're up close, not so much. If you space it out well, you can make uh, a lot of things happen with this kind of move. Especially against mashers. Alright, so let's set the track in on this. Yeah, so cool. Negative five, so not really. I would call this good track. This is one of those where you got a pretty big window to get around it. I had like a negative three move to test. I don't know one at the moment though. No. Alright, so that's down four four. Nice long range poke. Nothing special on counter. It's still only plus two. Um, next we got down four plus one plus two. This is his arm move. I believe it gives him a free stomp. No, it don't. It don't. It don't. Wow. It doesn't. Huh. You got a free down floor. You got a free down three. Definitely not bad. Down back three. Oh, down back three is the generic down three love from standing. Nice, he has that. Good love. I talked about this when I played with Kazumi and shit, and with other characters. If you're able to do this instantly from standing, you see how much range Phantom hitbox on his shit sometimes? With nice push out. Really good move, really, really good at setting up Wisp because not only does it push back, it pushes back slightly off axis. So a lot of characters swing. Their shit will be just off axis enough to make the hitbox alignment not quite reach you and shit like that when you 
backdash or sidestep. Alright, so this is negative 12. You see if I can still sidestep it. Okay. Woo. Doom shot. Thank you very much. Oh, the chat. I was wondering. I mentioned earlier. Why is the chat so quiet? Thank you very much, Doom shot. My chat. I swear to you guys. Look at this. See if you can see this. This is my chat. Blank. And then, and then up here, this is weird ass sun looking fucking icon. Blank this whole time. And I mentioned earlier that, oh shit, my chat's been kind of fucking quiet. Like, what happened? People usually ask questions. Holy shit. Let me try refreshing the page, guys. Twitch is fucking, fucking up. It's fucking up. Thank you very much, Doomshine. There we go. Now I see you guys. <laughs> it's been almost two hours. I haven't seen a damn thing. Hello. <laughs> well, now that I see you guys, any questions that I miss? Any questions that I miss? I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't know. I Twitch is fucking, fucking up. I didn't know. Did I miss any, any questions? Ask again. Damn, now I'm only down to 17 viewers. There was like that big host before. If people were asking questions, I totally missed all that shit. Oh man, I feel bad. Fuck, I feel awful. Well, thank you, Doomshine. <laughs> I feel fucking. I probably missed some good shit, didn't I? Jesus Christ, Twitch. And you were sucks when I noticed that the chat wasn't working before I refreshed. And it still wasn't working after that, I guess. I don't know what the hell happened. <sighs> Bunch of people probably thought I was ignoring them. I was big leading them and shit. Hitting the unfollow. Dot 421 is shit. I think Dot 421 is a great move. I think it's a great move. I, I disagree. I think it's a great move. It's shit if you're going by the context of what he had before. And that seems to be what l most large players, like, when they talk about that move, they're going based on, like, in comparison to before. Like, oh, because I used to have this dumb down forward two that I could just mash out randomly, get really high reward if a counter hit. Fuck that. Now 4 2 one isn't as good as that, but as the Tekken move, it is a great move. It is a, it's a duckable launch move. Yes, it is duckable. But you're missing the point. You're missing the point. So is this. You know what I'm saying? And if people are sharp, so is this. You large players love this fucking move, especially from back here. But guess what? That's also a launch punishable move from back there. You're thinking about it in the wrong way. This fucking down forward 2 one is super duper evasive. Super duper evasive. Has good range. And you can fuck with people by going for the first hit by itself. And the first hit by itself doubles as an obnoxious evading poke. 16 frame poke, basically. Super evasive. Especially with movement. This is a good move. This is a good Tekken move. You lost player team to get over it. <laughs> if it wasn't good, Lost Players wouldn't be using it. But they're using it. Very often. Just don't be a dumbass when you're using it, right? Don't just mindlessly throw it out. That's all you gotta do. It's not short ranged. Look! That's not short. It's not super long, but it's not short. 
If it was Hikaromo, it'd be too good. Moves like this should never be Hikaromo. That's a good move. That is a good move. It's a good move. A lot of characters would kill for a move like this. A lot of them. It's just Lars players are fucking spoiled. Bunch of freaking spoiled brats, you damn Lars players. Alright. I should have known something was up. But whatever. Alright, so what was I just talking about? Where do I get the frame counter? After party. Let me see if I still have the link for you. Hold on a second. Uh... Copy leak location. I got you. There you go. It's only in the comments, unfortunately. That's why uh, it took me a bit to find them myself. They didn't update the actual page. Alright, so I was talking about this move. So in track, it's pretty slow, like a lot of armor moves like this. And it is negative 12. Forces, it does not force crouch. So you can punish this with your standing 12 frame. But it does not give him a free stop like I thought, which allows me to test how punishable his stomp is. Wait, what? Am I crazy or did the AI not block this earlier? This game, this fucking game. How are you doing that? How are you doing that, AI? How are you doing this right now? So I guess it is guaranteed, and the AI is just being fucking stupid. What did you say Lars can't do? Up forward. Oh, you talking about orbiter? You can do up back for orbiter. He won't get a juggle out of it like Josie. He has to go up or up forward. We can tell you to up back. How did I get it to hit before? Nothing on counter here either.
Well, you can do that with that. Whatever. Oh, yeah. That one plus two. Uh, now you have to... Have you tried that on buttons? Oh, you could cancel out that Amagotri with uh, the Agma? Okay. But you cannot cancel out of it that way. Weird. I did try one plus two. One plus two is that. But you, uh. Oh, it's two plus three. There it is. Okay, two plus three is the throw. That still is not a reason to duck against dynamic entry. Like I said before, you could just break the throw. Give him the air throw, though. Ah, my music ended. Let's do one of these babies right here. Hold on a second. Man, I'm so pissed off that the chat wasn't fucking working. So pissed off. Fuck. Ah. <sighs> Alright, so you do get a guaranteed stomp out of this armor move. Despite what the AI was fucking doing before. This this makes, this makes no sense. Is there something that I'm missing about getting up faster? No, I, I welcome questions. I always welcome questions. That's, that's one of the things that I like to do in this. In this. Also, when people could correct me, you know, when I get something wrong, I like that because I'm learning these characters too. So, I like when people correct me. As long as they're not being bitches about it. But, uh... So yeah, this is definitely guaranteed. It's one of those things where you just gotta test everything back yourself. You can't always rely on the AI. The AI does impossible shit all the time. I can't think of a faster way to get up. I'm trying to tap up and then down back. It's not working. I missed a few punishes. Like what? I'm going up and down the list. What punishes am I missing? I ain't go through every punish. I, there's no order. The only order here is the move list order. The only order I'm going through here is the move list order. I'm not saying, hey, this is 10, this is 12, whatever. It's just I know when it comes up like forward to four, I know that's a 12 frame punisher. I'm going through the RB Norway order. By the way, those of you who don't know, if you scroll down to the YouTube, you'll see I've done most of the cast up to this point. All right, so the armor move, right? That's what I was on. Next, we got down two. That looks like an elbow. This is a uh, 17 frame startup. Oops, let me see if I got an email for my job. Uh... Okay, sorry. I thought my job emailed me. All right, so down two. Forces crouch plus eight on a hit. 
even on block. Forces crouch on block also. Knocks down on counter hit. Free stomp? Yep, free stomp. If it works on the AI, you know it's gonna work on me. <laughs> this seems like a good move. That's a pretty good move. This will probably floor break if he did it to a. Uh... Maybe not. This might floor break if you do it on the you know the floor break stage. Uh, zero is pretty damn good. Not much tracking though. Uh, 17 frame startup. So that's a good. Move. Next down three. Down three has the one plus two follow up or oh it's just one. I thought it was one plus two. And then on counter hit his combos, right? There's weird wall shit with this move. Like, there are times where the low would pick them up at the wall and it makes two high hits connect. Uh, it is negative seven. Low by itself, negative three. Uh, and this is plus four. On hit or on counter hit. Keeps him standing if it hits him by himself. Alright, keeps him standing out of the way. That used to knock down, didn't it? Yeah, of course it's a high high, so. It's not a great move. But I think this uh, Oki situation near the wall that. Allows you to use it in weird ways. Back three, four has not come up on the list yet. That's why. Yeah, no. Back three, four has to come up on the list when it comes up. I'm talking about. It. Don't worry about it. Down one plus two. All right, we're talking about down three. So down three, it's kind of whatever, except for that one wall situation. Apparently the low by itself is negative 14. But even then, it's like... Can't really delay it much. Now you can't delay it at all, really, so... Not great. All right, so next we got down one plus two, a lot of range. Let me check the track of that low, I'm sorry. the whole thing, right? Yeah, it is a fast low. That, that's one thing worth noting. 15 frame low. tracking on it. Usually fast lows like that have decent track. It's a pretty common thing. Not universal, but it's pretty common. Uh, sure as fuck, I can't either do different practice, but actually I should always fuck it up. Could be part of mixing for sure. How's your backdash canceling? Hey Manny, I tested the stomp at the power crush. I can block by holding back, then down back. Thank you, Doomshine. That's weird. There it is. The new back animation. That's what's throwing me off, because this new back wake up was not a thing in older games, because they had back growth. Thank you, Doomshine. So the this also doubles as determining that this is the fastest way to get up into blocking low in any sort of these sort of situations, because there's a lot of moves that do what this is doing right now. For example, let's double check this. Although it probably won't work. Not that, I'm sorry. See, in this case, it's probably guaranteed, though. Yeah, see? Definitely guaranteed off the down two counter. 
the power crush is not guaranteed. So the fastest way to get up in that situation is to tap back and then go to down back right away. Which, when you think about it, makes sense because I have a set to guard all after getting up. So the computer is probably, the AI is probably tapping back to get up and then guarding all. So down back to block the luck. So that does make sense when you think about it. But the AI was not cheating. This is Tekken being needlessly complicated like always. How punishable is the stomp? Negative 14. So Lawrence gets while standing 2 1. His stomp is worse. Well, at least it's not long, universally launch punish, but like some of the stomps. But Dragon Off stomp is like negative 11, for example. <laughs> All right. So down three has good tracking also. Down three also hits grounded, right? That's another good use for it. Nice way to tack on some damage very quickly. Because down, the only thing that's faster for low is down four. And it does not hit grounded. So you have a fast low that hits grounded. Very good. Don't let the fact that it's only six damage be like, oh, it sucks. No, fuck. That's, that's a good tool to have. Trust me on that one. Not only that, when you bounce away like that, that's a good setup for a running three if they tack right after. Right? If you're not shitty like I am. Right, like if I do this right now, and I set him to tech, right? Ugh. Inputs, the slow recovery. Yeah, see, we can go even further to test this. He's uh, teching left, make him side walk left after tech. Right? There it is. See? He got hit trying to sidewalk. And then we can put the opposite direction, right? We'll have him sidewalk right after teching right. Right? So, slam him down, spike him. Because if you don't do that, he's going to tech, right? See? Wait, no, he doesn't. Wow, you can't. That's a hard knockdown. Uh, that's a better example. Yeah, see there. That's how I was spiking him, because if they can tech, they'll do it. But we want to spike him down. Ah, once again. That was the case before, right? Or was it left before? I might be able to set this up better. Oh. It's a thing. It's a weird thing. It's uh, slower. It's a side step toward the foreground. That's really what's going on here. I'm gonna go left now. He's gonna get around it. Yeah. All right. So it's toward the foreground. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. Toward the background. Sorry. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. <coughs> A lot of weird shit going on here with this run through right now. Lars is a weird character. Is there anything else? 
Alright, so next is down plus one plus two. Uh, this is a popular one. Good damage knockdown. Super unsafe. First hit of shoe shine connects. Down three connects. I don't think it's guaranteed though. Hold back. Hold back to escape the down three, but that's a free whiff, because I'm not going to be able to whiff punish you for that. Right? What am I going to do to whiff punish that? Nothing. So you can easily tap a down three if they stay down. I can't even side roll. Nope. I cannot side roll. I have to hold back. And then you're free to do, you know, whatever to catch me coming in. Shoe shine might be more of a commitment because the first hit only connects. Right? And then you with the second hit. Oh, but the second hit follows you. The second hit follows you. Did I get a 12 on shoe shine? Damn, that shit's cheap. That's a good look. Oh, but that one you could side roll the first hit. Weird. Still, both of these are solid options after that. I cannot low parry that if I hold back. Cannot. You need frames to low parry. I don't have enough frames to low parry. So I gotta low block that. All right. Uh, all right. So I was reading a chat to catch up. Sorry. So down one plus two is a good low. I don't think it tracks. Let me step, but not walk. Definitely not walk. Even though it looks like it might be, it's not. And it's slow enough that you could step guard it. Make a whiff, even. Like it does the same hit on uh, uh, same knockdown on regular hit and counter hit. It's just a strong knockdown low. 24 to 25 frames, so it is like on that edge case seeable status. So you can't really abuse it too much. You could abuse it against somebody shit like me, but against people who are sharp, you don't want to rely too much on this. By the way, go with the solid low. Next, we got down back one. This is pretty much uh, what he has for low, one, another one that he has for low poking. Because he has a built in follow up to stop people from mashing, and it's only negative one, and it high crushes. So, this is a solid one too to go with his uh, down four. But it is slower. Okay. 
Negative 12, which is not bad. That's not a punish. That's 13 frames, right? That's not a punish. Uh... That's natural? Oh shit, that's natural. So I guess this would be his go-to quote-unquote low poke, but the moment that you commit to this, if they block the low, this becomes lost punishable. Because you're doing low high. But he could go into his crouch. He could recover crouching. Now current army no way, it's all negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. No matter how you end this, it is always negative one. So all standing four seems solid. Right? Because Oh wow, it's a rough. Alright, well that makes sense actually. Alright, but if I go for any mid basically, or anything other than a jab pretty much, than a standard 10 frame jab, it's gonna be bad news. What you do want to be careful when doing this kind of shit is if your opponent has a magic four. Because there'll be like 11 or 12 frames. And uh, 12 frames exchanges. 12 frame exchanges, so you'll eat a juggle if you fucking with a magic four. So you gotta be careful. Not to mention that. Alright, what's the tracking on? right side pretty well though. Um, unless we got down back two, this is a classic, right? Because he has down back two one, which is his like basically his version of Jin's back two one. A lot of forward movement. Safe on block, it picks up in a lot of situations, like near the floor. Although I wouldn't be surprised if this hit like AOP and shit. Minus the AOP duck. So down back 2-1 is negative 8 on block. Plus 6 on it. So when you're dancing around from like this range right here, and you're looking for whiffs, a way to go in and start your pressure, you whiff punish with that, you're at plus 6 in their face. Which always sets up, of course, counter hit back four, right? 15 frame counter hit tool. Or go with whatever f uh, pressure you want to go with. Just always have back four in the back of your mind after that for opponents that mash when they shouldn't be mashing. Like after getting hit by that. Yeah, this is like this is like classic Lars right here. Not back to one is like the Lars juice. It's the shit that he does with the wall combo, right? You do like, what was it, the forward four string? You do like this, 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 and he gets like a shoulder or some crazy shit. Or you do like, what is it, one, two, down back, two, one, shoulder. It's like his crazy ass wall combos. It's a big part of that too. Uh, yeah, and down back two one was why he was so fucked up in tag two. And one of the many reasons. It, it basically allowed him to float off of so many situations that a lot of other characters cannot. So it gave him all sorts of unique conversion opportunities off of tag jumpers that a lot of other characters couldn't do. Really stupid shit like, oh, Brian, you do a snake edge and then you raw tag out to Lars and he could down back 2-1 to pick up and shit like that. 
a launchers that aren't normally tag launchers. You turn them into tag launchers because this would float characters in crazy situations. Capoeira launchers, shit like that. Uh, so anyway. It's still a great, like, approaching poke. Like I said, treat it just like Jin's Back to One. Treat it the same way. Maybe not as much range as Jin's Back to One, but still really good range. A lot of forward movement and a solid hitbox. The damage is kind of whatever. It's, just, um, it's 15 frames starting. <clears throat> so, uh, down back two by its, uh, down back two three is another option. I don't know if that's a. I think this this was the knockdown, didn't it? Oops. I keep like mashing the uh, unblockable. I feel like this used to knock down. Well, it does on counter hit. It's down back two three. Uh, knocks down. It does that ass knockdown, but they could block during that, unlike before. So it's plus 33 guardable. So if you get that sort of knockdown off of this, that you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want to them for a mix up. Um, down back two, three is zero on hit though. Natural combo? It is a natural combo. No delay. Natural combo, negative. 13 on block. I think this down back two has some tracking too. So one side. Yeah, it catches step, not walk. It catches step to his right side. Anyway, yep, 13. Yeah, negative 13. My dog is scratching at my door. Gizmo, stop! There it is. Step guard this pretty easily. I see that, but then I got hit, right? Uh, how linear is down back 2-1 break? Oh, by the way. Well, EJB, I just went over it. <laughs> uh, it catches step only to Lars's right. So, step left, basically. See it right now? If I step, if I step, I have to step guard. But if I walk... But if I go right, I don't have to worry about it at all, pretty much. I'm messing up the timing. There it is. As long as I go right away. If, it, if, it, it's, a, if it's a neutral situation, the fact that delaying my step means I have to block it tells me that in a neutral situation, this could totally clip you, the down back two. So it seems like it's decent. Especially if you move around before doing the down back two, this could easily clip people all day long. That's what that tells me. But in a situation where you're going right into it out of a move like this, at negative one and shit, it's not the best. Let's see about the second half down back two one. The down back two one might cover you better. Yeah, see? I have to block the one. I can still walk it though. There I got around both. Yeah. So there you go. It's a great move. Uh, yeah, no, it's a great poke. Great poke. Great poke screen. Have you gone over Shushine yet? Uh, Psycho Ninja, not yet. I'm still going through the standing moves. And it's going well. Thanks for joining in. Outside of before where I had like 80 something viewers thanks to Raw Madler, but apparently my chat wasn't fucking working. I'm so pissed. 
All these people were like, what the fuck? All right, anyway. Um, yeah, down back 2-1. It's a Lars top 10 move. I would put it that way. Bottom of his top 10, maybe. Or maybe in the middle. Very, very good move. One of those moves that you look for to safely approach in the mid-range. Pa pa. All right. So then, I already went over down back 2-3, right? The kick. Uh, which I think might be a jungle ender. Some, this might be a jungle ender too, right? What does this do off of a jungle ender? Does that give like a good wall splat? It sends him flying away, but does it give him like a decent wall splat? You lost pairs. You lost pairs, but no. Well, he also has down back two forward, which goes into silence entry. Uh, Corner to RB in our way. This is negative five on block plus six on hit. By the way, um, I wanted to say from before, uh, one of you guys, I think it was video games, told me that about the uh, tapping down forward in regards to the, the grab out of uh, dynamic entry. While I was testing that, I realized something. So dynamic entry in the neutral situation, you could cancel it with down forward or down back. Or down. See? Cancel it with any sort of movement, basically. You cannot do that if you go into uh, if you go into it with a button. Though. It's like the opposite of what Marduk's VTS used to be. <laughs> if you go into it like um, down forward three with that stupid little spin that he does, you, you're you're forced to stay in the stance unless you press a button. See, I can't cancel that. I'm trying. Does not appear to be any way. Oh, he could charge that. Ooh, thank you for telling me because RB Norway did not fucking tell me that shit. Down back 2 3 has a charge. He looks like he's twitching with his left arm when he does it. You can let go of the charge early, Asuka style. You get plus 8. Partial charge doesn't give you anything, unlike Asuka's. Asuka's is way better, right? If you charge on hit, it does that. Uh, it can hold back. Alright, so you could charge it for some gimmicky ass shit. I'll tell you right now, though, if you abuse that shit. You're gonna get the rear. You're gonna give away the rear. Or at least the side. Let me do this in the back. No, you can't. By the way, this is how you would, I would, uh, if you're fighting against, uh, Ling, and you're Lars, and you block the uh, roll into the Rue kick, that's how you should punish it. 2 one, 4 because the roll into the Rue kick is negative 11, but she stuck back to her. So this will all connect on her back, and I'm pretty sure you cannot duck that. If you can duck it, then you do 2 one, 3 instead. I take that one back. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. You would do two one three. <laughs> hmm, maybe you wouldn't actually. She might be able to counter that kick. She might be able to counter that kick. So you might not get that. Let's put a little asterisk on that one. Because there's a gap in there. 
I thought that it felt like the, that mid to the high didn't give you enough of a gap to turn around, but I guess I was wrong. All right, so we're going over down back two. So down back two, three, gimmick city. We know about that. Plus eight, which one charged? Oh, RB Norway does show it. Okay, sorry, I fucked up. It does show it. Yeah, plus eight. Knocks down on normal hit and on counter hit. You can hold back on that knockdown. And then we got down back two forward, which is just like forward two one, right? Plus six, negative five on block, right? Forward two one, forward two, forward one two, sorry. Forward one two, negative five plus six. Same situation. So when I went over before forward one two, same thing applies with down back two forward. Uh, this one's sick. Except for the fact that you don't have, well you do. You do. You have deterrent. You know, you have that to stop people from mashing so you can go into it. And you also have that. Well, maybe not that so much, but I feel like the kick is more the, the, the deterrent for mashing. It's down back two by itself. So you can go into Gimmick City if you want with that. Next we got what the hell am I scroll down too much. Down back two there it is, okay. Uh down back two three, went over that. Next we got the sweep, one of the most annoying fucking moves. I think Lean can't do anything about down forward two one. Is that an elbow? If that counts as an elbow, then you'd be correct, Doom Shine. If down forward to contest the elbow, she probably will be unable to do anything. Uh, Alright, so next we got... What do we got? Down back four, okay. This freaking move. This is a key Lars move, because unfortunately he kinda, it kind of has to be. But the thing is, it's very risky. It's negative uh, 26 on block. But it is plus five. Fourth crouch on regular hit. And then on counter hit, he gets a juggle. Whatever the fuck the juggle is. Learn to learn to juggle somewhere else. You get the idea. Um, but he's got uh, he gets juggles on counter hit and he gets good damage off of those juggles on counter hit. Because the start of the juggle is like 20. And then he can go into fucking I don't know, whatever, right? What the fuck? Right? Yeah. He gets decent damage, not great damage, but still. Um so the thing about this shit is... It doesn't really track right. But you if you're fighting against Lars and you want to get around this, you have to time it quite well. As you can see. Not to mention there's also... A spacing thing. But it is slow enough that you could step guard it pretty well. See? And if they happen to whiff, be ready to do your wall standing launcher either way. Uh, it is 21 frames, so it is not seeable. Not seeable. Not seeable. Anybody tell you it's seeable? I don't believe them. Don't believe them. 21 frames. That's not seeable. Maybe it's seeable if your only mix-up is this and that. Then, yeah, of course it's seeable. It's 21 frames as opposed to 13. But as, like, a move you just do in a neutral, that's not a seeable though. That's not seeable. That is not seeable. Trust me on that one. It's like one of those things that it's only seeable if you use it as your primary low and you spam the shit out of it. But in your general offense, that's not a seeable low. Uh, and down back four is cheap. This is one of those where I, would, I wanted to go over that you could sidestep it right, but it's kind of difficult to do. But it's a key thing if you're fighting against Lars to sidestep that shit. Because 
his uh, weak side is his right side. And you want to take away, you know, one of the more dangerous lows. I mean, that's semi, semi dangerous. There's only 17 damage, so it's not that dangerous. But still. Um, but yeah. Still, it's a good move. Also, go left. Eclipse you all day long. Timing doesn't matter. Eclipse you going left. No matter what. It's kind of like Jack's down back one. It's, it's uh, you can sidestep it towards the stronger side, but you have to time it well. Yeah. Definitely take a step, but does Lara still have the flying double kick? Flying double kick? While, no, while running three is one kick. Is, is, I don't know what flying double kick you're talking about. You're talking about that? Lightning screw you? He, he has that, yep. Yeah. That's one of his more infamous moves. It's not as good as it used to be, but you still got it. And it's still awful on block. Yeah. Yeah, he still got it. Up forward three. Up forward plus uh, X on a PS4 controller. Up forward plus A on an Xbox controller. Up forward plus left kick. Alright. So we went over down back four. Oh, down back four does tech crouch, obviously. So, one more time. Yep. That's another good thing about this move. If you catch people doing strings, see? Like jab strings, and you go under the high, you're gonna get the trip, and then you're gonna get the juggle. Because it's fast enough to do that. If it were like 25 frames, it wouldn't be fast enough. Versus most strings. Alright, so next we got down back for some more. Ah, there it is. His freaking backswing blow. On counter hit, it starts to juggle. I think this used to start to juggle on normal hit, I think. Yeah, so whatever, whatever the fuck is juggling, right? Uh, this is negative 14? I thought this was launch punishable on block. Why is this backswing blow like not universally launch punishable? <laughs> That's fucked up. Ah, oh boy. Oh yeah, I wanted to test. Perfect setup for that shit. Look at this. Depending on what sort of string people go for, yeah, if people go for like strings. You're gonna get a juggle. That shit is fucked. If people go for like a single poke like that, you either get a regular hit or you'll get a block. <sighs> Excuse me. So uh, keep this as like a pocket sand thing. They'll just automatically do it. Maybe like set it up with this poke by using this poke every once in a while. And then noticing that they swung, and then when they swing, bam, right? That's how you should be doing that. You gotta read before doing it. Negative 14. Yeah, negative 14. Kuze. There you go. Negative 14, negative 14, negative 14. Kuze. Kuze no Aniki. Man, I'm turned up for that Yakuza 6. I wish I had the demo. <laughs> I'd be playing the whole game right now. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Down back, plus one, plus two. It is a backswing blow. We already know that backswing blows, they don't track. They're designed for, for catching people coming toward you. So, they have, like, no real range either. Some of them have some decent range. Should've, shouldn't go that far with it, but... Yeah, his looks like it has more range than usual because he sticks that fucking finger out all the way. Like he's trying to grab your nut sack. Alright. So next we got back one. Oh, I like Kazumi's back one. 
or is it her back two, whatever it is. Uh, 15 frame mid homing move, right? But it doesn't, oops, but it doesn't cause a spin on regular hit. It does good damage. And it's safe on block, negative nine. It causes tailspin. Yep, it causes tail, especially if you hit people out of the air. Good option. Good choice. Good move. This is a good move. Probably his best homing move. Unlike uh, the other one. The other one's alright for more damage, but it has its own issues. Because <coughs> it's unsafe. And it's slow. This is fast. Safe. <coughs> nice little chunk of damage for 17. And if you happen to hit people out of the air, you get a juggle. <coughs> He also looks like, uh, this might be a tiny bit evasive at times. Maybe not. Maybe not. It might be in my head. It looks like it should because he's, like, leaning into it, but eh, never mind that. Still, great move. Plus, uh, plus four on regular hit, plus six. Ugh, I keep mashing it. Plus six on counter hit. So it's got counter hit properties. No visual difference in animation, looks like. Oh, yeah. It's a slightly visual difference. I don't think you're going to be able to really tell. If you feel like you could tell that you have a counter hit, then you have a perfect frame trap for back four. All right, so next we got back two. Ah, this weird-ass looking move. Looks like he's trying to start a dance. Uh, so it's gut punch here with very limited range. Not decent range. Negative seven on block, back two, plus four on hit, and then he has back to one, <laughs> right? Uh, this is 16 frames, so I wouldn't call that a punisher. Uh, plus three with decent pushback on hit, so you can set up a whiff easily with back, by backdashing off of this. Like this is the backdash, or if you press your advantage, you could do that, but it's only plus three and they could backdash too, so be careful. Uh, don't always press this sort of advantage. Um, and back to one is negative 10. Min min. No trap. Ah, oh, that's four. Two one. Remember what I said earlier about punishing with 10 frames of Lars? It should be probably be 2 1 more than 1 2 because of the range of 2 1. Right? There it is. Yeah. Alright. So he also has back 2 3. Yes. This is also a natural combo on normal hit. Really good damage. Wall splat. Like, I would be fishing for this at the wall. This would be one of one of the tools I would fish with because this is a good one too, right? But this on block, even though they're both, they both could be ducked, right? So they're both equally unsafe. But on top of that, this is high, high, negative 12. This is mid high. Sorry. Back, back to... Back two, I'm dashing into it, so I'm getting forward back two, sorry. Back two, three is mid-high, a little slower, 16 instead of 12, but it's safe if they block it. So, I would fish for this at the wall. Over forward two, four. I mean, you know, they both have their uses because speed is a factor, right? But still. And also, it pushes back. Maybe at the wall, it pushes you away. I don't know. I'll have to pick a wall stage later to test all this stuff. Uh, second hit, counter hit launch. Oh, talking about this. Yes. I don't know what the juggle would be, though. What's the pickup? Oh, you could delay it. Stop back to you. 
You cannot delay the kick. You can delay the one to catch people. What's the pickup? Oh, it's Hicker for a Masoon! That's a great move. Holy shit. Down back to one? about that? Is it because I'm space? You sure it's not down back to one? Yeah, down back to one. There you go. Yeah, that's a hard pickup. That's a hard one, but it's worth learning because this seems like a really good string. Back to one is good. Back to one is good. Hit confirmable. No matter how much I delay it. Alright, see? Stand guard off. No matter how much I delay it. Oh, that's a fucking... Are you kidding me? This is really good. This is fucking great. Right? Yeah, that's good, man. Shit. And then you could delay it even on block to fish for that counter hit. It's hard to do, but if I were a lost player, I would definitely work on getting this consistently. The cool thing about this is if they're near the wall, you're going to have an even easier time converting off of it. Because the wall is going to be there to stop them from moving away from you too much. That's good shit. That's a good, uh, good, very, very good move. Um, did I test the tracking? We hear loud winds in the background because there's loud winds outside. We have a nor'easter here going on in New York right now. So the winds have been pretty crazy. So it has uh, some sort of tracking to Lars's right side, but not like super reliable. Right? And if, uh, if you're against Lars and you just step, you have to watch for that second hit stone. And the second hit is only negative 10. See, this is what I was talking about earlier with this shit. Was it this shit? Uh, no, not that. This shit, right? Right? Fishing for that last hit? Please. This is something I would fish for. Because you're only risking negative 10. Maybe them stepping it, right? But you could delay the shit out of it. And it gives you a juggle on counter hit. And it's a hiccuperable string on top of all that. No matter how much you delay it, it's a hiccuperable string. Really, really, really good. Let's set something else. Is that as much delay as I could put on it? There you go. Even with the delay, I can't step it. I cannot step it. So you don't even have to worry about being stepped uh, after blocking the after the first hit is blocked. That is a very very good move. Wait, the input is there. Wait. Uh, I prefer it to be forward back to one input. Still, everyone has a preference. What are you talking about? Oh, the 14th frame? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 16 frames. Yeah, good move. And like I said, down, uh, uh, sorry, back to th uh, three at the wall. Seems good to me too. This, no hit confirm on this. You can't even delay the three at all. So you have to come in. Definitely have to come in. And unfortunately, the pack 2 one doesn't wall that, so you can't get that crazy with it. That's a fucked up mind game if you could, though. Alright, so we went through that. Next, we got Bat Fury, which has a lot going on. So this is one of those uh, scrubby Lars players moves right here. Back to <laughs> it's also good uh, whiff and block punisher, right? Because it... It's, sorry. Yeah. 
Good range on it, right? Yeah, this is a good whiff punisher. The input is good because you're moving backwards. You know? You go pop, hold back, whiff. You do one back dash cancel, back dash, hold back, they whiff, you already have the input. That's the thing about, like, for example, Huarong's, uh, what's it called, Plasma Blade. The input is what makes it such a good whiff punisher. Because you're doing backward movement and it's like, oh, he did something, one button and I get a launch, right? Here is not a launch, but at, at the very least, you have a solid string. Uh, and back three has a couple of other things going on here. So let's go through it from the top. Back three by itself is 17 frame startup. Negative 12 on block, plus four on hit. Nothing special on counter, right? Nothing. Uh, then we got back three, four, which is mid-high. Negative 12 on block, just like this. So I'm guessing it's the same kick, right? Yeah, it's the exact same kick as forward two, four. Negative 12 on block, can be ducked, of course. Um, and then he has back three forward for silent entry, which is negative five on block, plus 11, plus 11, plus 11, plus 11 on it. Plus 11, all right. So, that's going to interrupt. Yeah. I don't have a 12 frame mid that I know of to test. But he beat out my 13 frame clean. And then I beat him out with a crouch stab. So that's plus 11. So you can also whiff punish with that back three and go into a silent entry mix up. If you really want to force that mix up that's like seeable <laughs> when, you, when people are used to the matchup at least, you can do that shit. Alright. And back, uh, that's just a good, that's just a solid whiff punisher in general. Back three, four. On top of being, I guess, a deterrent for the silent entry stuff. Can't delay it, really. If you could delay it, not by much. Doesn't feel like you can. No counter properties on the floor. It's hard to test this one. No count here properties on the floor. Uh... <sighs> Alright, so. Next we got back four. This is what replaced the old down forward two. So a lot of characters will have some sort of counter hit tool around 15 frames. Not all, but a lot of characters do. And they tend to be me's more often than not for whatever reason. And it's all different with Lars, except for Lars, instead of a counter hit jungle, he gets a counter hit hit throw. And uh, the common thing with these is they're like negative seven, negative five on block. Lars is negative eight. So a lot, a lot of players, a lot of players are whining, but this is like you're not as good a placeholder for your random stupid down forward two bullshit from before. Get fucked, Lars players. <laughs> I don't have kind words for you, Lars players. This is your replacement for that. So if you're fishing for counter hit, it's back four. It does space out a little bit, but. Not much. Maybe if you get them to block just in tip, you'll be spaced good enough to do something about it. Maybe not. Probably not. Yeah, it catches jabs. Alright. You can totally do it, huh? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Fuck you, Lars players. You're whining about losing down forward two, but you can do shit like this? Off of a counter hit me? God. Never make, me make these fucking people happy with this Lars bullshit. The only way I'm gonna hit him out of that is if I delay my move a little bit. But if I go right forward after blocking, he's not gonna make swing, right? He's not gonna make swing. He's, he's not gonna make swing. You get killed. You have to purposely delay it a little bit to catch this shit. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Uh, EJB, this is from Yakuza Kiwami right now. Before this was Yakuza Zero. I'll link you the playlist. This should be a link to the playlist. Playlist I've made on my YouTube. They're basically all Yakuza game music. Oh, I gotta add to it now that I finish Yakuza 5. Alright, so anyway. Back four is a good move. Uh, tracking wise. I tested the back two tracking, right? Making sure. I doubt the back four has any track. Yeah, no tracking. Not much range either. It's a big whip. You gotta be careful with that in that aspect. Limited range. Easy back dash. And punish. Alright, so next we got... Went over the back four. Oh yeah, the back four only gives the hit throw if you counter hit from the front. By the way, if you hit him on the side, you don't get it. See? You get plus seven, I guess. No problem. Kind of like Claudio HK hop kick. Lars Hockey could still negative 13. Lars down 4 2 was safe. Exactly. I mean, Lars down 4 2 did need a counter hit. But the thing is, the reward was so great. It had a lot of range. He could just kind of just throw it out there without care. And he has a lot of strong tools on top of it. Like a lot of people, when they look at moves that are considered busted, or like considered maybe it was a bit too strong, not broken, obviously. Broken is overused. But like it was too strong, is that you have to consider what does the move do for that character's moveset. Lars in the game like tag two the way it was it, it way too good way too good. too much it was too much you put that move on a couple of other characters it's not a big deal right there's other characters that have stronger counter hit tools even than that but it's just like it get it was way too good for Lars he was way too good at picking up and doing a shitload of damage and with the tag system doing a shitload of even more damage it was, it was really lame it was really stupid it had a ton of wall carry off of the combo all of that shit it was super dumb it probably tracked so i don't even know if that should track <laughs> it probably tracked <laughs> shit was fucked up that shit was fucked up man all right um anyway Alright, so we went to the back four. Next we got back is almost two. So this is the other homie move. This used to knock down. This used to like knock away off toward the uh, toward Lars's right side. Now it causes the new spin animation, right? Not much, only one spin. So it does wall splat if they're up against the wall, but they have to be like right up against the wall. Um This is now plus six. Wow, so only one spin gave it plus six. So it's not that great. Plus six with a lot of space. So I wouldn't use, like, back four is, is risky here, right? I would say because this, maybe. Even though that is like the frame trap, it might be risky here. The spacing looks not great. Okay, maybe you're good. Okay, you know what? No, you're good. Oh, no, you're not good. You're not good. You're not good at all. <laughs> You're not good. All right. So be careful with that back four after that. <laughs> or maybe not, because who's going to know the back dash, right? That's just something that people who study matchups and look for specific things find out. That's not something that your average player online is going to do. For example, Katarina's 1-1-2, one, one, the plus seven shit into the knee. That's like used so frequently that everybody already knows. You can pretty much backdash and launch her from doing that. Easily. On block. Yeah, most hot kicks are 15. People when people talk about hot kicks, they're generally talking about 15 frame launchers that crush lows. Right? Unless it's like orbital punches and shit like Nina. Which is not 15, I think. But 
So yeah. Um, how do I do the backflip? Weird, I did it by accident. Oh, whatever. <sighs> okay, so we got... Uh, that's back plus one plus two. It is negative 11 on block. It is homing, so we don't have to test that. It is quite evasive. Quite evasive. I've seen this shit go under mids. Will I be able to recreate that? Maybe not. But I will say, I think it's a, at least, it is a high crush for sure. Yeah, it's a high crush. But at certain angles, I swear to you, I've seen this go under certain mids. It's just one of those things I want to be able to rec uh, recreate. But it is a reliable high crush at the very least. And yeah, negative uh, 11. Well, what did I miss? Have you guys seen a picture for geese on second set? Nah, I don't use chicken. Uh, it's a app made by, uh, what's his name? Nick DeJesus. Uh, off in bed? I think off in bed. Have you heard of that guy? I think he's the one that made it. It's just uh, one of those apps you can use for frame data on your phone and shit. A lot of players use it. A lot of times when you see players looking down on their phones in between matches and tournaments, they're looking at like that app or their own notes and shit. I mean, I haven't used it myself, so I, I don't know how like good it is or reliable. I'm sure it's fine though. All right, anyway. Um, next we got back. Oh, this is unblockable, isn't it? Yeah, it's unblockable. It starts juggles? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. You could juggle? What do you juggle with? Is it a well timed dash down back to one? Next is a combo. Uh, dynamic entry? I don't know what you could juggle with, but uh, uh, KZ says you can juggle. Dash, that oh, that look, that seems hard. All right, I figured it was that. See, I get while running three. How do I avoid that? Oh, so you have to go to a move. Okay, the with the down forward three, hold down for dynamic entry and then press two. Thank you, Dupin. And uh, KZ. Damn. Alright, so if you want to really fucking style on people, you get a lot of damage with this into a jungle. So that's the one thing about that. But either way, it's still like, you know, gimmick unblockable shit. You gotta really, like, put the fear of God into your opponent to try to do that. Style on them. Next, we got Lightning Screw. You can input it as up, up forward, up back three. It seems to always do maybe a little less forward movement if you tap up back, maybe. I'm not sure. 
Uh, either way it goes, 16 frames, negative, what, 25 or some shit? Negative 26 on block. But this is one of those where it causes, like, zero block stun. So you have to be ready to punish this, right? And just to show you how little block stun. So little block stun that you could jab him out of the air, right? See? So you, if you want to punish this, you have to be ready for it, you know? For, like, full punish. But you definitely want to full punish. Not only that, you want to punish with a mid. This used to push back more on block. This is a, if you uh, play Tekken 6 online, a lot of shitty lockers is doing this back to back because people were fucking up punishing it all day. He was going under mids and shit. There is still a window where he could go under mids, but it's it's not like the way it used to be. He used to go under mids super consistently with this shit. It was so fucked up. Man. But yeah, it's really bad on block. Not only that, the juggle damage is relatively low because the first hit launches and the second hit connects in the air. Which automatically takes your 70% scaling. Uh, it might not be as bad as it used to be because it, it, uh, it does do 14 damage for second hit, which isn't bad. But the other thing is, he recovers crouching. So, your pickups after that second hit are kind of whatever as far as damage goes. Like, while standing too... While standing four is more damage, looks like. Yeah, while standing four for more damage. Crouch jab. I'm trying to like crouch cancel down back two one. Nope. All right, whatever. So you get the idea. It's lower damage than your average, like, hot kick style. Like, this will, uh, up 4 4 will net you more damage. Or your average hot kick. Maybe not your average hot kick, but still. <clears throat> While standing 4 best option. His down forward 2 was so bad back then. Wait, what? Dragon Oak? Oh, yeah, Dragon Oak cannot. In Tekken 6, Dragon Oak cannot launch this. <laughs> he cannot. Maybe not at all. I'm not sure if it's, like, an inconsistent thing or just not at all. My Dragon Ball is in a good place now, so I don't feel too bad for him. <laughs> Lars is a nightmare. Uh, as far as tracking goes, there's not really any tracking at all with this move. I say that, and now I'm hitting the AI. All right, so you gotta, maybe you have to walk this move. Timing is strict. Holy shit. Fucking Lars plus one timing, huh? The moment they go negative one, though, watch this shit be easy. I'm tucking. I'm not sidestepping. Also, when you, get, when you do get it to whiff during a sidestep, you have to be ready to, like, Wait for him to land if you want a full like launcher. Oh, that's another cool thing about down forward too. If you hit them in the side, you're gonna get the second hit. They turn toward you, and you'll get the second hit still, kind of on act on axis. But if you hit him in the back, you get weird shit like that. So you hit him in the side. See, <laughs> you hit him while he's turning around. You'll get like almost on axis. Anyway, that's that move. It does have some deceptive tracking, I guess, so I was wrong about that. If you try to step Lars, be careful. A lot of step guard against Lars seems to be the answer. Don't commit fully to your steps against Lars. Step guard a lot. Alright, so next we got... Up forward four. When I was before. Safe on block. Negative nine. Absolutely horrendous on whiff.
This is the like the classic Lars Panic button right here. This is like the go-to Lars Panic button. And as you can see, not in the right home about as far as tracking goes. As in it has zero tracking. He does crouch when he lands. That's the key thing here. I've frequently fucked up punishing this because I would go for a high for some reason. I was like, oh, I got his back. Let me go for a jab string or something. No, you gotta go mid. When you get this to whiff, you gotta go mid. See, you have all this time for him to land and still punish this all day long. See, you saw how slow I was? I let him land and everything. See, even slower. I got hit there. Just don't get clipped. Often, that's how the move hits me. I get clipped by fucking up my movement. Who's leaving? Uh, take it easy, video games. Or whoever's leaving. But anyway, yeah. Uh, make sure you go mid if you uh, whiff punish this. And uh, yeah, make sure you're not too slow, but you could be relatively slow. You could go with something, you go with something slow that's more damaging. Rather than just going for something super fast, you know? Like a lot of people go for a generic hockey or not forward too. It's like, nah, fuck that. Go for your big shit. Your 17, 18 frame launcher. That does a lot of damage. Go for that. Not much else to say about that. No tracking. A lot of forward movement. It's an orbital. And it's safe on block at negative nine. And you can put us up for less forward movement for some reason, or up back, which goes backwards, but he only gets like down one plus two guaranteed. As somebody said earlier. Alright. So next, we got forward forward two. Ah, yes. This is one, uh, this is an approaching mid launcher, a forward forward two, which means it has some bootleg tracking on it, because the forward forward two input makes it a line. Which means if you want to sidestep it, you have to sidestep it late. You can do it early. Huh. Wow, this is even shittier than I thought. Holy crap, it doesn't even get much from that bootleg ass real line. And that one a little deeper on the dash, huh? There you go. Get a little deeper on that dash. <laughs> See? Add a bit of a dash in there. They have to change their timing to sidestep around it. See? I can't even walk it. Look at that. <laughs> now that it hit the camera fucking switched to this we switched sides. Weird, right? So yeah. Always remember that no matter which character you're using, if the move comes out of a dash forward forward, you can do this kind of thing with it. You can hold the second forward for a little bit. And add some tracking. Oh yeah, this is one of those. It's like a while standing one. If you hold forward, you go under them. You will go into silent entry, and the pickup is pretty much always silent entry three. You can opt to not do that and just juggle them like this, which probably gives you shittier juggles. You have to look up like a juggle video or a juggle guy for Lars to find out about that. But still, this is just one of those moves to catch people moving. Or like when you dash up, if you dash up into a low very often and you notice people, like a lot of people, when they see a dash up, a lot of people like to duck. A lot, a lot, of, you'd be surprised at how often you'll dash up and people will just duck and then stand or ducking while standing. This shit will fucking stuff that shit right in their face when they duck. Put a little bit of a delay on it to really get them going because they're going to think it's going to be a, a running grab, right? another way to use that move from this range easy to set up a running grab easy to set up a forward forward to if people get greedy and duck silent entry two while standing four huh? ah yes thank you hey wow wow it's as you said, some characters, not universally, and that would be why they'll fall out of it. Silent Entry 3 will be the consistent. If you want to delve further into it, as uh, KZ in the chat said, 
just now. Some characters will be more consistent than others. Some characters will just fall out of it. Uh, he doesn't have magic four. This is 17 frames. He also doesn't do anything on Connor. Hit. He does not have a magic four. Sorry, Lost Players. He does have it. 32 damage is good, though. <laughs> nothing, uh, you know, nothing to uh, feel bad about. Also, I think that standing four track. Did I test the tracking on that standing four? I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure that tracks. It looks like it should. <laughs> Never mind. Alright, so it tracks the Lars's right side. Not walk, though. Only step. But it doesn't know a different step right. Lars's weak side, basically. So, yeah, it doesn't track. It looks like it should, but it doesn't. I'm not a fan of when they make kick animations that way that don't track. Because visually, it, you know... It just causes visual confusion. Or whatever. Balance, right? So anyway. Yeah, forward forward two. Good move. But it is negative 13 on block. Right? And just to show you. If I block it and you hold forward, you're not going to go into silent entry. There's none of that bullshit going on. So, negative 13. It's hitting him, but there's no punish, as you can see. So he, he could block that. So it is negative 13. Uh, I gotta use some bathrooms. I do feel like maybe I should call this as part one and do it and continue next time as a part two. No matter about the halfway point. Let's see. Let's go through a few more moves here. Forward, forward. Let's go through the forward, forward moves. What do we got? Oh, I scored up too much. Sorry. Oh, he has a lot of 4 4 4 4 2, so we went over that. Next is 4 4 3. Sounds like he's fucking vomiting. Alright, so 4 4 3 is the same thing as this. Well, no, not the same. It's a similar looking kick. Right? And it does a similar sort of knockdown. Right? On counter hit, was it? Yeah, so much range. Okay, so not a similar knockdown. It's one of those that you gotta hold back. If you don't hold back, you slide on your ass, he gets like that free or whatever, right? You gotta hold back if you get hit by that. Uh, 443 is safe. Ooh. Nice approaching safe mid for a good chunk of damage with a knockdown and possible wall splat if they're near the wall. It's pretty good. Once again, I'm, sh I'm assuming no tracking, but. Uh, Forward, forward as the bootleg track, right? Yeah, see? So I gotta sidestep the late. Yep. Yep, see? So the forward, forward input adds the tracking. Negative eight on block. We got pushback. You know what that means. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's so annoying. You know one of the things that fucks with my head so much when fighting Lars? <clears throat> Excuse me. When fighting Lars is this kind of shit, because more often than not, I'm like, all right, negative seven, negative eight. If this move is safe, I could take my turn. But you notice how he has so much of this shit that sets this up to fucking kill you if you swing at him so often. And every single shithead Lars player knows this, no matter how scrubby they are. They know this shit. This back swing below, they know this shit. And if you don't know this shit, you're going to get fucking frustrated. You're going to get you fucked up the ass. You're going to swing. You're going to eat counter hit all day long. It's a fucking free damage. It is incredibly obnoxious. And then you can't launch that unless you're like, you know, a 14 frame launcher. Man, that is fucked up. That is fucked up. Right? But it's like, it's not like fucked up that it's overpowered. It's fucked up that it, it is such a messed up way to exploit knowledge. Lack of knowledge. 
that's just built into his moveset. And it makes it real, that's what makes it so annoying. That's what puts you in the dark. Like, a lot of people know Lars. They know all this shit, right? The good players don't just throw out, like, the better better players. They don't just throw this shit out, like, all day long like this. It's the bad players that can do that. But the thing about that is, yeah, the bad players are going to do that, but that shit's going to fuck you up if you don't know when it's, like, really a good option for him and when it isn't. And more often than not, it's a great option to catch people pressing buttons. So it's like you got to be afraid to take your turn, right? What it should, what it should really be is... When you take a turn at a, in a negative a situation, you should go for something a little bit slower. Put a little bit of delay into your option. Right? That way, if they mash a negative eight, they'll still get hit. And if they go for this, they'll fucking go back and come right back into your move. That's what, they're, what, what the most consistent answer is. That or just backdash and launch it for doing that. Those are the two consistent answers. But it's like my brain is hardwired playing Tekken all this time to be like, uh, oh, he's negative eight and he's kind of close. Take my turn. No, don't take your turn. Don't, don't, don't take your turn. Just let him win. Just let him win. And I say this now, but the next time I fight a lost player, I'm still gonna be trying to take my turn because I'm, you know, I have to fight a lost player for a very long time to get that out of my system for this matchup. I really do. But then they're bitches. They don't stick around. They stick around for like three, four matches, and then they're like, oh, I'm awesome. I end the fucking match with my win posing stomp because I'm fucking cool and shit. While I'm stuck in the green ranks or whatever, fuck off. <laughs> annoying. That shit's annoying. I gotta fight like a bad Lars player in a long set. That's what I need. Not a good one. A bad Lars player. <laughs> I need to fight a bad or a mediocre Lars player in a long ass set to get that out of my system. I really do. I'm a slow learner when it comes to putting this shit into my fingers and reactions. Alright. <clears throat> Rolling start. All right, so four, four, three. Good move. I used to think this was unsafe, but apparently, you know what it is? Because it looks similar to this, I guess, to me. So that's why I used to think it was unsafe. <laughs> Go with the start after stop. Whatever. All right, uh, four, four, four is next. Ah, yes, of course. This is like one of, one of his uh, better lows, but still risky. It's like I said when I started this. Lars is like really good lows are all really risky and his low pokes aren't the best so he has to rely more on the uh, generic lows and shit like that his general low poking is really weird and risky in different ways all right so this is a big one right this got buffed I think this used to be negative three but it always spaced him out well and now it's zero but it still spaces him out well so you know of course you could still do this shit but you're at zero so you could just do a manual backdash to play it safe and see if they win Right. Let's see how it spaces them out. Plus, it's a forward forward input, so what I said about the tracking. See? Easy. Easy with me. The only thing is to get a launch at this, you have to commit to backdash like arc glass. You have to. Because if you wait, the strings might catch you. See? The one 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 chases down, there's a lot of that going on. So you have to like backdash and commit if you really want to be sure. If you have a good read. You have to backdash and commit. Oh, see, even that, it wasn't fast enough. Nope. In that case, yeah, so even then. Excuse me. So you could backdash into other stuff too, though. Like, right? That's not a bad idea. Here's why. See? In this case, if I do strings, it goes under them. Nah, they, in that case, it's better. But... Mm -hmm. It really depends. He could also sidestep. He is zero. Two caught him, but not a one one. Not a two one. Now four one clipped him. Though. So, anyway, the other thing about this low is 
it is launch punishable. Like super launch punishable, like delayed hop kick as you can see. Right? Um, it is negative 31 on block. This is like really bad, like hell sweet. This is like I could stand up and crouch throw you bad. Really bad. Like you could do whatever the fuck you want. You could do whatever you want as a launcher, right? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want as your launcher. So the the mid, um, mid, right? The mid is also unsafe, launch punishable, but the spacing makes it weird. So it is negative 16, right? See? So Lars has a lot of forward movement, so he's he's good. The low has some pretty decent range, so it's not gonna happen super often. But still, it is negative 16, so you gotta be careful. So yeah. High risk, low. No unique counter hit properties, but decent damage, right? 34 damage is really good damage, actually. But yeah, no, no unique counter hit properties. Just two more damage, so you, you don't really get shit for an encounter hit. And there's no reason to only go for the first hit, really. Because, yeah, it's plus five, but, like, it's a natural combo, and if they block the first hit, it's going to stagger you. So there's no reason to not go for the second hit, basically. Every time. Like, it, you know... Takes forever to recover on whiff, so even in a situation it's like, oh, I whiffed it, and I don't want to give him a chance to size up the second hit. Nah, just go for it. Go for the second hit. All right. So anyway, uh, and as I said about tracking, it's gonna have built-in tracking because it's a forward, forward, four. All right. So anyway, next we got uh, ah yes, forward, forward, one plus two. The elbow. The bow. 16 frame elbow that sets him spinning sideways counter hit bam right juggle star you go into uh what's it called dynamic entry with forward three and press two to follow up off of that on counter hit easy counter hit confirm see how late i did that shit i I waited for him to actually hit the floor out of that, and then I inputted forward three, and I still got the pickup. If you want an even easier pickup, you could probably just dash up, down, back to one. And it's going to be less damage, I'm assuming. But yeah, dynamic entry two, and shit like that. Great mix up with four. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Remember how four, four, four is a forward, forward input? So like I said, you catch people ducking to a forward, forward two. That's another reason to make people duck when you dash up. Because you have forward, forward, four. So yes, it is a great mix-up tool. Thank you for reminding me, uh, KZ92. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but that's K-A-Y-Z-Z-I-92. Yes, great mix-up tool with 442. For 4443. So yeah, and then 441 plus 2 is safe on block. No, sorry, it's not safe on block. This is kind of how down forward 2 was, kind of. It's something kind of like that. Uh, but one frame faster and safe on block. This is unsafe on block and one frame slower. The same bootleg tracking rules apply. It is an elbow, so I don't think you can counter it. Whoa, push back, push back. Push back, so Lars will be unable to punish him. Gigas will probably be able to punish that if I were to guess. Maybe Kazuya with back one too. But Lars cannot, most characters will be unable to punish this. Put it that way. Negative 11 with a lot of pushback. Which means, it's like, I'm gonna try to punish this. Oh, sorry. Uh, at least that covers you. At least that covers you. <laughs> Alright, anyway. So, yeah. And on normal hit, it knocks down. As we saw before, it wall splats. So, yeah. And I'm assuming at the wall, there's no pushback. Uh, when I do part two of this, I'll have to finish the moves. And I'll have to go through some of this at the wall. I remember. Because uh, Lars has really good wall pressure in general. So... All right, here's the last one that we'll go through. Four, four, three plus four. You've seen this before, the slides. Two kicks, natural combo. Um, does it knock down? No. It does hit grounded, and that second kick does good. Yeah, 15. Ha ha, 26. This is uh, zero on hit. It is negative 16. 
on the block. So it's actually bad on block. It does force crouch on hit though. There's not really, despite it being a slide, there's not really variable frame data here. There's two active frames. So you can make a negative 16, a negative 15. You know, you can make it plus one at best, but you're not gonna see that, like at all. See, I'm trying to get it here, but. Yeah, you're not really gonna see no, no active frames here. Despite it being a slide, Uh, nothing special on counter hit. It does hit on the ground. It's a popular follow-up in a lot of Oki situations. A lot of knockdowns, for example, that. It's popular after that. I've seen it. See, it, when it hits you on the ground like that sometimes, it floats you into the second hit, so he still gets the both hits. Uh, decent tool. Uh, it's always nice to have an approaching low. It looks like it should, cr it should crush highs. It might toward the end. Yeah, it crushed. You see, it's going under my jab. You can see I'm swinging the jab. Not there, though. Yeah, see? In the later frames, it goes under jabs. It's not like a crush that you use after, like, a jab, obviously, right? You're going to get jabbed out of it. See? If I do a slower, I'm not even. Yeah. yeah, it's at the very end. Corner RB Norway, four of us before. It crouches on CS21. So it's crouching. Oh, it's crouching after it's active. Interesting. So it's not really a high crush at all. He just recovers crouching. So if he gets a whiff. No real like tracking here. If you get to whiff, you gotta go with a mid or a low. Um, and it has to have a lot of range as you can see the first hit whiff there. Alright. And that's how that move works. Negative 16 on block. You can punish with lightning screw from crouching. Or while standing one. All right, so I'm gonna stop it there for now. Part one, I'm gonna upload it to the YouTube. Lars punishes a lot of things that have pushback. He sure does. Uh, I'll get back to this, finishing this, um, uh, hopefully Sunday, if I could, I'll find a time. Uh, I may stream later today, but if I do, it's either gonna be like some, maybe some online tech or I might play something else. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, you guys. I'm gonna try and make this more consistently, get back into this groove. Uh, I don't, I can't promise how often it's gonna be because I'm still in the middle of my last semester in school. So when the schoolwork is heavy and I got a lot of shit to do, it might be like a week gap before the next part. But I'm going to try to do it more consistently. And then as I get towards the end of my last semester and then going into the summer, I want to hit the road hard again. And I really want to finish all the characters uh, by this summer. That's my plan. I've already gone through most of the cast. If you scroll down, you'll see it all up on my YouTube. Uh, but either way it goes, if I don't see you guys later, have a good night. If I do see you guys later, well, I'll see you later. Uh, take it easy, everybody. Thanks for the follow, uh, Kai, Casey, Casey, whatever. Thanks for the follow. I'm going to host, uh, Juicebox. Thanks, Hunchy. I'll see you guys when I see you.